Chris Premier Realtor and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit the Hotel at Kirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. Iowa and Maryland this Sunday afternoon. Not quite to the afternoon yet, but by the time we get first pitch, uh, we'll be in the afternoon. Got to have it today. We'll welcome in color analyst John Evans now. John, this is one that I think coming into this series didn't expect to be on the verge of getting swept. And so we got to change our, our tune a little bit and figure out a way to beat this Maryland team. No, a little bit like, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit like uh, Texas Tech now. You know, Lubbock, you lose the first two games. Um, Maybe didn't perform the way you wanted. Maybe a little heartbreak in there. Maybe a little bit of, of whatever. But facts are now you need to find a way to come back and, and get a win and, and salvage uh, salvage one because as dumb as it sounds and as obvious as it sounds, being one game behind Maryland is, is way, way better than being three behind Maryland. And that's what's at stake today. You, we talk about the weather conditions a little bit because they, they will play a factor this afternoon. Got to imagine, hopefully, to Iowa's advantage. But Maryland's hitters uh, have been really good all series long. Iowa's pitching hasn't risen to the level to really compete uh, with them. And with the wind blowing out to left center, got to be really careful today. Well, and it's been, uh, you know, it's been a couple of, of importantly timed mistakes you know from the pitching staff really and and unfortunately then for on the flip of that from the hawkeye bats you know not being able to uh you know to to finish the rally you know it, it, you heard in the highlights there you know the grand slam in the first inning was was finishing the rally brennan derigi the three run home runs finishing the rally um iowa hasn't really hung up a bunch of two and three and four which is what they've done all year um, but haven't, haven't really been able to do that. Um, you know, it's a solo home run here. It's, it's kind of scratching one across there, but it's, it's just been a different run so far. But uh, with all that being said, some, some positives to, to take away from the series. The offense remains consistent. A little bit of a slower start yesterday, but uh, you could almost guarantee, count on Iowa to score a few runs every every game, and so it's just maybe the pitching that, that needs to pick it up a bit. Well, and we talked early in the season about the two out production for the Hawkeyes, you know, and, and you know, I think it was Mobile where the stretch was was pretty, pretty crazy for how many runs they were scoring with two outs. And, um, you know, you knew that wasn't sustainable. Um, you know, and maybe this is one of those this is one of those lulls where maybe you kind of revert back to the mean. But now, you know, you keep you keep your approach, you keep your discipline. And then, um, you know, you go to you go to Ty Langenberg today, who's um, who's a quality pitcher he knows this role he's he's you know one of the leaders of the staff so it's not like you're turning to somebody where you boy we don't know what we're going to get today you're you know we're going to get good tie today and and uh he's going to have to keep the ball down he's going to have to locate well and you know that'll be the that'll be the first key to um to a hawkeye win is you know kind of keeping that uh, uh keeping the bats under control you're not going to shut anybody out today with this win no. but but keeping them under control will be important just looking at the series as a whole, you thought Friday would be the the low scoring game, right? With the pitchers that were were out there on both sides, uh, and, and for the you know first half, it was relatively low scoring. We hung up a big number in the first, but uh, that game really exploded in the second half of it. Now we get to Sunday, which are typically a little bit more high scoring, uh, just based on what's left and available in the in the bullpens with the pitching. But and today could be even more so. And, and so I think offensively, exciting for Iowa because the offense hasn't really taken a, a step back. When I talked to, uh, I was talking to Coach McGrath in the dugout before the game, and uh, you know, one of the interesting things he said was the approach yesterday. Uh, you know, like when when Zach Volker came in the game, the approach was challenge the hitters. They were not going to hit the ball out yesterday into that win. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas you know Friday and now what you'll likely see today is. Uh, medium pop flies today have a chance to go um, whereas yesterday balls that left the bat to left field at 100 plus miles an hour still might not have gotten out because of, of how hard the wind was blowing in let's take a look uh, around the conference right now some action already going on and then a loaded slate the rest of the way Indiana looking to move to four and one in the early mm -hmm. going of the Big Ten as they're up on Penn State four to one uh, you've got Michigan State off to a great start. They'll play Rutgers later. They're 4-1 and one as well. 
uh, Purdue Northwestern's around of Minnesota, Ohio State will start at the same time as us and then Michigan off to a 5-0 and start. They'll take on Illinois and then you'll have Northwestern, Purdue, Indiana, Penn State playing the second game of doubleheaders today as well. Uh, we don't necessarily like to get into the RPI talk and put too much pressure on the situation, but you just when you look at Iowa's schedule the rest of the way, uh, these are our games, uh, this game, I guess, is, is all we've got left with Maryland for now, but uh, really crucial in terms of the RPI talks to get a to get a quality win well the reality of the situation is you know you'd love to not talk about it but in the Big Ten you have to it's yeah. a little bit you know I talked about it last year too was you know nobody wants to talk about it in the Big Ten because we're a big power five conference but the reality is in baseball you're a little bit more of a mid-major at least the way people look at you so your RPI is really built at the early part of the season you know the the next the next four conference games for Iowa right now are just monstrous uh, from from an RPI, from a national, um, you know, perspective outlook of them. You know, it, Iowa's fallen to, uh, I think it was mid 80s now in the RPI, you know, from from a high of, of probably 10 or so. Mm. Um, and, you know, now we're starting to get in the time where it gets harder to move it. But to your point, you know, you look at the schedule, you know, Maryland is is at 58. You've got. Uh, Bradley, who's 92. So, you know, the midweek game's a good game. And then you've got Indiana that's 34. So, you know, your next, these next five games um, are crucial to, to get quad one, quad two opportunities. Um, and, and then not only get them on the schedule, but then t to get the wins. That's how you're going to, you know, you're going to vault yourself up from, from 80 because then, you know, you go on the road to Minnesota. They're, they're 237. Wow. Um, you go, uh, you know, later in the season, you know, Michigan State, Ohio State are holding in there right now. And so if they can keep that up, you'll have some good opportunities there. But then you end the year with Northwestern at 285. Mm. So, you know, those are you the don't see that one get much better. Do you? No. And those are the games where you're going to show up and you're going to lose RPI points. Yeah. And then if all heck breaks loose against you on a given day and you lose one of those, then it's really tough. And so um, more importantly, um, you know, win this game, you know, don't drop another series along the way and, and you know, sweep who you should, and Iowa will be okay. It, it'll all work out, but um, you want the numbers to back you up somewhere along the way. Hey, if you win every series, you're going to win it all, right, John? <laughs> I guess that's more of a, a professional standpoint, but I don't know how much that would help us getting into the, the tournament at this point, but you just got to find a way to, to keep winning, and you don't get the sense that the guys are – are pressing at all they're probably a little bit frustrated three game losing streak that's not something that that sits well but uh, motivated rather than feeling sorry for themselves i think that's right and, and you know you've you've seen uh the coaching staff has has wiggled the the batting lineup around which is something they hadn't been hadn't been tinkering too much with but um you'll get uh yesterday we talked about taking seegers from the top and putting them on the bottom but but otherwise left it the same well today there's changes and, and that'll be a little bit different and you know, my sense is uh, I'm not sure who will get the midweek start, but, but you know, uh, I'll, I'll miss that one with you. But uh, when we get back to Indiana, um, I think you'll see Brody on Friday. But my guess is you'll see uh, you'll see a different pitching lineup Saturday and, and uh, I'm not sure possibly Sunday, but uh, more than likely on Saturday. And, and just as they kind of go back to, hey, what do we need to do to find that rhythm of, of what we were doing when we were winning games? Even when they weren't pretty, what were we doing? All, all it takes is one. I think all it takes is one piece in that starting rotation from the pitching staff to solidify things, and the Hawks could be off and running. All right, we're moments away from first pitch. Coming up after this break, we'll talk with coach, head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. 
that knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down, not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular and the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores, where right now, kids can eat free. to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye baseball today. The series finale with Maryland. Try to get on the board after the Terps have taken the first two in the series. Joined now by head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller. Coach, a, a thought on yesterday's game? Um, really tough loss um, because we came back from a deficit early and uh, Zach Volker came in and, and really stabilized the game. He pitched really well for us. Uh, you know, Anthony didn't have a good start and uh, we gave up three early and um, Zach came in and, and, and shut him down for a while and uh, see our guys battle. The, the, the pitcher for Maryland Dean did a really nice job with our hitters the first five innings. It wasn't you know a great day uh, to hit with how the wind was blowing and we had some bad luck. You know, uh, probably three home runs that didn't go out yesterday um, that would have on a day when the wind wasn't blowing in from left. But that's just part of it and. Um, to, but to, to take the lead in you know in the seventh and then turn right around and give it up, our bullpen gave it up in the, in the top of the eighth. That was painful, and you know we had some opportunities and you know to break it open. And again, bad luck. Uh, Sam Honar bases loaded hits a 107 mile an hour line drive off the pitcher's back, and it drops right in front of him, and he flips it to the plate for the force out, and 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 we don't score a run and. There was just several situations like that, and I guess, you know, one, if if we continue, you know, we can't continue to pitch from behind in the count and walking guys and hitting guys like we've been doing, and and unfortunately, uh, you and I talked a lot, you know, when we were winning a lot of games that this can't, it's not sustainable, and we were finding ways to win, and the ball was going our way, and our offense has been doing a pretty steady job, and. Really, I don't feel like there's anything different with our offense other than the fact that Maryland's made a made a few few really plus plays that have saved runs, and we've ran into a few few bad luck situations with line drives here, line drives there, and and and, and as we talked, you know, when we were 19 and three, um, you know, the game the game flips and it changes, and you're, you know, Maryland Maryland was a team prior to this that wasn't getting a lot of those breaks, and then for whatever reason. They've got them all this weekend, and, and credit to them, they've made some of them, and they've made those plays, and that's what I told our team is that, you know, we're a good defensive team, but but championship teams make defensive plays that save runs, and we had opportunities the last two days to make plays. They're not e they're not easy plays. They're maybe not even 50-50 at time, but if you're going to win a championship, you got to make those plays and 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 save runs. But but again, at the end of the day, if we have to continue to outscore people, and 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 you know we come back and take a lead in the seventh, eighth, or ninth, and and not and we're not able to hold it. I mean, it make, it's tough sledding that way. And if our pitching doesn't clean up, you're going to see a lot more of that because in, in this league, it's it's you know you're, it's just not going to happen. You think at this point it's it's more of a, a mental thing with the with the bullpen. I know physically not throwing strikes as much, but yeah. mentally it seems to be contagious at this point. Well, yeah, you can definitely say that. It's just it's just they're all capable, and um, you know, just giving us some sort of consistency and giving yourself a chance by not walking or hitting the hitting the leadoff guy. And our, our staff's been doing that at, a, at an alarming rate. And you know, you talk about it. Um, I mean, you train it, but 
you know, when they get out there on the mound, they, they have to be the ones that do it. They control themselves and their confidence. And until that group just decides it's going to stop, it probably won't stop, you know. Or we, we, need to, we need to also give some other guys chances, and we're going to probably start doing that today. Well, to go back just to that game, Zach Volker, before we talk about the, the guys that might get a chance today, Zach was outstanding yesterday. You think maybe down the road uh, maybe he's earned a, a starting spot or you like him out of the bullpen yet? Well, it's, it's just tough, John, because even – even with Zach, you know, he's a four or five inning guy. Um, when, do you, when do you value those innings, you know? And that's the hard part and is, is do we continue to run guys out there that are a bit of a wild card uh, and hope they're good that day and then get Zach in the game, you know, in the third, fourth inning where maybe he can get us to, to Llewellyn and, you know, some guys who are being consistent for us? That's the tough decision, and it, it, it's really hard. It's almost like flipping coins, and, um, you're, you know, it's just – I don't know. That's a question we're contemplating. You know, we, we tried it with Simpson last week. That didn't work out. Tried it with Keaton. This week it didn't work out. You know, uh, Marcus has had a couple decent innings. Maybe you go back to Marcus for two or three, and or, or maybe you do start Volker and then piece it together after and try to get off to a better start. Um, you know, but I guess I feel pretty good about our offense uh, consistently scoring runs and fighting back. Um, but th- there comes a, a point where. You know, nine, seven, that's a little too much in a, in, in a weekend series to expect your offense to, to generate off the type of pitching we're seeing. Joined by head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show. Series finale with Maryland. We'll go with Ty Langenberg on the mound today. Yep, and uh, like Ty on Sunday, that's his comfort zone. He did a great job for us last year. Um, you know, older guy, been out there. We need Ty to go out and and pitch a good one today. It's going to be, it's not going to be great conditions to pitch today with how the wind's blowing. It's blowing straight out, 20 to 30 mile an hour. Um, it's going to be a launching pad, very similar to the way it was on, on Friday, if not maybe even a little more. And um, you know we're facing a really, really tough left-hander today um, that that could give us trouble if we're, if we're not really sharp uh, as far as swinging at pitches in the zone. Well, offensively, though. Uh, We'll value the launching pad today, won't we? Well, coach? we do. We do. You just, you just, ho- you just hope that um, the hitters stay dialed in like we have been, and uh, we chased a little more yesterday than than we did the day before. But then we tightened it back up in the the sixth, seventh, eighth inning, and it really, it really paid off. And you know, like I said, it was close to breaking that game open. And um, you know, Peterson hits a ball that any other t- day is is just crushing. You know, 110 miles an hour. <laughs> perfect launch angle and you know it doesn't get out and Huxdorf probably would have had two and um, we could use those today but like I said the the, the lefty uh, the lefty's gonna he's so far and hopefully today's maybe the day he's not but so far he's been really really good with his command and lives on the edges and he he hasn't missed a whole lot over the middle and really good stuff and uh, it's going to be a great challenge for us and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how, how our guys go out and handle it. And then Ty's going to be a challenge for Ty to really work ahead and eliminate, eliminate the free bases. Uh, we need to play good defense. And, you know, that's the thing that Maryland's been able to do is that, um, you know, like major league average on a ground ball is like 80, 83, 84 miles an hour. You know, they're, I think all but one or two yesterday of their ground balls were like over 100 miles an hour, you know. I mean, they're just they're, – even the balls they're hitting – uh, on the ground are, 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 are smoked and um, makes it makes it tough. But, um, yeah, we just have to pitch better. There's your keys to success. We have to pitch a lot better, continue to do what we're doing offensively, and, and really um, hopefully we hopefully we get the, the ball to bounce our way today and catch a couple breaks, um, you know, that, that we haven't caught these first two games, and we'll, we'll be in good shape. Just to that point, you know, through the seventh yesterday, you got to be proud of the team and, and sticking to the plan, though. They, they kept chipping away, kept battling, oh, did. didn't get down. No, that's a game That's a game that we need to win. I mean, when you take a lead in, in, the, in the bottom of the seventh, uh, that game needs to be over. And and it was the same story, um, you know, Friday night. That, that game needed to be over, and uh, we ended up giving it up late. And, um, you know, not, not so much because of getting hit, but because of, you know, hit by pitches and, falling behind the count and, and, and walks and then the big hit and that's what we you know that's what we have to stop and we have to find somebody tough enough to step in there and get the job done. I uh, know probably a little bit early to talk RPI and whatnot but th- this one feels like a, a, a big one to get today. No it really is I mean it's it, it, it's one of the teams that we're going to play this year that could help could have helped us with the RPI and 
um, you know, we need to get a, you know, you say that every game, but, you know, obviously a, a win today would really help in that category. But I just, I just hope that, I just hope that we can go out and, and, and just continue to play hard and play our style of baseball and not press. And that's the good thing is you, you haven't seen our hitters really out there doing that. And, and um, they've taken on the challenge that, you know, until we get some things cleaned up on the mound, we just have to, to figure out a way to outscore people. And that's, that's what we're trying to do. Ton of leaders on this team, Coach. We'll be all right. Let's win the day and take down the Terps. All right. Thanks, John. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from Dwayne Banks. The series finale with Maryland coming up in just a few minutes. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kids meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. Getting closer to first pitch, Iowa and Maryland this Sunday afternoon. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Well, we should have a good crowd on hand uh, today, don't you think, John, with the watch party for the Women's Basketball National Championship at Carver coming up in just a couple hours. Maybe some people stopping over here first. Well, I was trying to do some uh, some golf math and it was just thinking, okay, so it's 150 yards or so to the left center field fence. And then, so yeah, we're 300 yards from the front door of Carver and uh, it looks like we've got people sitting on the front step over there. Saw some people tailgating already, so, so God bless Iowa fans. We're ready to roll. And, and yeah, hopefully... Uh, some of those decide it's a pretty nice afternoon. Instead of just rolling straight in there, let's let's check out some baseball first. Yeah, will be be a little bit of a, an overlap today. I'm afraid. I don't know if I see this one getting done within a couple hours. No, I. Uh, <laughs> if this turns into a uh, if this turns into a slugfest, you and I may end up watching the uh, watching the fourth quarter over there in, <laughs> in Carver with uh, with ten twelve thousand of our favorite friends. Well, let's think about how important the first five innings might be today for the Hawkeyes and, and just showing that, that they've got the life to to battle and fight, which I think they do. Uh, jump on Maryland early, get another chance at them early, and then hold them off. We've talked about this in a couple of series from the other perspective, you know, finishing a team off, and, you know, making them lose interest right away. Uh, it'll be important for Iowa to, to come out and show the interest. Now, take it one step beyond that, though. Uh, you know, Iowa, the, the first two games of the series has done something they don't typically do. You know, they've lost a game when they were tied in the seventh, and they lost a game when they were leading in the seventh. And so, um, you know, they don't usually go 0-2 in those situations, and that's where we're at. Well, look to rebound today, try to avoid the sweep against Maryland to open conference play. We'll step aside for the national anthem. When we come back, we'll have the batting order. And starting lineups, it's the series finale, Maryland and Iowa from Dwayne Banks. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Wiener, director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. Woo, got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah. 
Hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Great national anthem to get us started here today in Iowa City. The Hawkeyes 19 and 6, 0 and 2 in conference play. Maryland 17 and 9, 2 and 0 in the league. Let's go with the batting order for the visiting Maryland Terrapins. Be very similar to what we saw yesterday. Luke Schliger will lead things off. Nick Larusso batting second. Dangerous Matt Shaw bats third. In the cleanup spot, batting fourth is Matt Woods this afternoon. Kevin Keister. Bats in the middle of the order in the five spot. Bobby Zamarslak, he's their designated hitter today, batting sixth. Seven, eight, nine, Eddie Hakopian, Jacob Orr, Elijah Lambros. The Hawkeyes taking the field now defensively with Brennan Derigi at first. Sam Honar at second. Michael Seegers the starting shortstop. Raider Tello at the hot corner at third. In the outfield from left to right, Sam Peterson, Kyle Huxdorf, and Ben Wilmus. Behind the plate doing the catching for the Hawkeyes today is Cade Moss. And on the mound for Iowa, the Sunday starter, Ty Langenberg. Start number six for Ty on the season, eighth total appearance. He's three and two on the year with a 439 ERA, 26 and two thirds innings, giving up 35 hits, 14 runs, 13 of those earned, 10 walks, 34 strikeouts. And kind of been the problem so far for Ty. Opponents hitting 315. So we'll see uh, important day. Uh, keep the ball down. Try to try to miss barrels because if you hit a if you hit a barrel today on a little fly ball to the left, it's going to turn into a big fly to the left. So I, I think Iowa probably has to embrace today and accept the fact that it's going to have to be high scoring. It's what? just not going to be even even five to three. I'd be really surprised by that. Oh yeah, through through four innings, maybe right. <laughs> I, I was talking to Coach McGrath again before when we were when we were talking before the game. You know, we talked about that mental approach again and. And I still equate it to I still equate it back to golf. You know, it's you know you're just not going to hit every shot perfect. And, and you know, and in this case, especially on a day like today, you know, Ty Langenberg isn't going to throw every pitch perfectly. Kyle McCoy, the starter for Maryland, is not going to throw every pitch perfectly. And you're going to get a bad break. You're going to get a ball that should be caught that floats out and you know you know finds a hole where it shouldn't find one it drifts into a gap whatever and it, it's going to be how you respond to that and how you limit it so that you know one run doesn't become three doesn't become five and get you out of the game maryland's head coach rob vaughn his sixth season head coach of the hawkeyes rick heller Getting closer to first pitch. Ty Langenberg has concluded his warm-up pitches. Umpires today, Michael Mazzarisi is behind the plate. Mark Hutchinson down the first baseline. Daniel Jimenez out at second. Andrew Fulton at third. Schliger's in the box. First pitch from Langenberg is a called strike on the outside corner. Started right on time, 12.05 first pitch. We do like to control our area, don't we? <laughs> Already starting with that, huh? One ball, one strike from Langenberg. This umpiring crew's been with us all weekend. Andrew Fulton was behind the plate yesterday. He's at third now. The 1-1 is hit in the air to left. Carrying well, trouble, and a leadoff home run for Maryland. Back-to-back -back games that Luke Schliger has hit leadoff home runs to start the game. Maryland won nothing. And... Pretty big, pretty good beneficiary of the win both times too. Is uh, <laughs> drifted one out. That one, you know, well hit ball, low and outside pitch from Ty. It wasn't a terrible pitch. Um, just goes kind of golfs it out. 
uh, 99 exit below and lifts it up in the air and it's it's that's what's going to happen to left you're going to have to work away from right handers you're going to have to work inside the left handers um, as he misses that one fouls it straight back to get started but yeah if you if you miss away to left handers or you miss in to right handers um, it, you know in that case he put a light out on the scoreboard but you know Denton Carver and the uh, the road uh, cars on the road counts one and one to Larusso. One one outside again. It's two and one. Yeah, your point that uh, a couple of pitches and, and and fly balls that that were hit to the outfield would end up not being caught, right? That that, that took an effect right away, John. Jeez. Yeah, didn't need to didn't need to get that get that uh, proof of correctness that that early in the game. But here we are. Two balls, two strikes. Pitch from Langenberg's fouled back to the screen. It gets caught in between the pole and the net. So that's going to hang up there and stay put. Interesting. <laughs> right, behind, right behind the post. 2-2, two, two, swing and a miss. Langenberg battles back, gets a strikeout in the first. And that's, you know, you could just see the, the, the attack process, too, as he kind of worked away, worked away, worked away. Um, good piece of pitching, good bounce back, and that's the, you know, just like we talked about, short memory. You know, it's you're going to you're gonna give some things up today, but just got to keep getting outs. Here's Matt Shaw. First pitch from Langenberg, fouled back to the screen. Because you're going to want to be... Uh, you're going to be, want to be on your best behavior and concentration here against Shaw. Right. He's been outstanding in the series. He's got a 353 average. He's got 10 home runs. Out of the windup, the 0-1 from Langenberg. That's lifted foul out of play to the right side. 0-2. You got 20 extra base hits on the season. 10 stolen bases. Driven in 30, scored 26. I think he's pretty good. Here's the 0-2. That's way outside from Ty. Went with the breaking ball. Yesterday it was the kind of the bottom of the order for Maryland that got things going for him, and then the top would, would eventually hit him in. 1-2. Nice pitch from Ty, but it dropped low for a ball. Better attack there. The, the first pitch he kind of set up outside and then missed outside, so not... Not really a pitch that's going to tempt Shaw, but that was a good one right on the outer part of the plate, just low. 2-2, two, two, off the end of the bat, hit foul to the right side. Well done from Shaw there to stick yeah. with that one. And, you know, good fastball from Ty outside and maybe just off the edge of the plate, but Shaw had to go get it and protect. Here's the 2-2 from Langenberg. In on the hands, popped up on the infield. Ty comes off the mound, and he'll make the catch in foul territory. He had to go make that play. He was the closest guy to it. Yeah, we kind of joked about it a couple times this year about you hate having your pitcher uh, catch pop-ups of any sort. But, you know, he really got in you know, after working away, 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 really jam Shaw there. And then with Tello playing such a deep third base, uh, the ball wasn't going anywhere. Yeah. So Ty had to hustle over and get it. Two outs in the inning now for Matt Woods. First pitch strike from Langenberg. You know, same idea here. Work him fastball inside, breaking ball inside toward that back foot. Woods squares the bunt and lifts it foul to the left side. 0-2. I've never seen a cleanup hitter square around a bunt as much as I've seen Woods square around a bunt. I think he got hit by pitch twice yesterday. That's right. I <laughs> go back to Go back to that. I'm not sure how much speed he has either. Just a couple of stolen base attempts. So just trying to get creative. 0-2 from Langenberg. Swing and a miss. Ty gets a couple of strikeouts in the inning. Gives up the leadoff home run. But after that, all business from Ty. Good job there. Maryland won. Iowa nothing. We'll go to the bottom of the first right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends. Saving money at the pump. Soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, 
Start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Bottom of the first inning, Maryland leading Iowa 1-0. Hawkeyes will go with this batting order today. Ben Wilmis will lead things off, followed by Keaton Anthony and Brennan Derigi. Kyle Huckstorf in the cleanup spot today. Raider Tello will bat fifth. Sam Peterson out in left field batting sixth. 7-8-9, Sam Honar, Michael Seegers, and Cade Moss. They'll take on a tall left-handed pitcher for Maryland, Kyle McCoy. McCoy 2-2 two and two on the season, making his sixth start, ninth appearance overall, 281 ERA, 25 and two-thirds innings, giving up 17 hits, eight runs. They've all been earned. Good control pitcher, just six walks, 25 strikeouts. Opponents hitting just 191. So going to be really, uh, really important for the Hawkeye hitters. You know, fastball's coming in right around 90, plus or minus a little, but a, a really good slider and curveball. So. Freshman's shown good action here in the early going for Maryland. It's Wilmus leading things off. First pitch from McCoy is outside. Maryland wearing black tops today with the red M logo over their heart. White baseball pants. They've got black caps in the field with their red logo on the front panel. 1-1 is the count now to Wilmus, who, like the rest of the Hawkeyes, is donning the Sunday gold script uniforms with black print, black Numbers, white baseball pants for the Hawkeyes today. 1-1 one, one on its way to Wilmus. Outside corner, 1-2. and two. Move Wilmus up to the leadoff spot. He was really good yesterday leading off innings. So, hey, why not lead off the, the game for the Hawkeyes? Yeah, I had an interesting stat line yesterday. 0 for 1, but three walks. So, well, He hasn't had to swing the bat yet. He's watched a couple of strikes go by, but also a pair of balls. So two balls, two strikes. In the bottom of the first, Maryland leading 1-0. They got one hit, a solo home run to lead off the game from Luke Schligger. 2-2 to Wilmus. Check swing did not go. Ball three. You know, Ben hitting 286 on the year, but 556 on base percentage. 13 walks, four hit by pitches. So um, does a good job working a, working an at-bat this way. 3-2. Line drive into center. Carrying well towards the track in the wall. Lambros is there. Who else? He makes the catch out number one. Really going to hassle Ben about warning track on that one <laughs> again, and and that's the you know the difference though between uh, between a little bit of, of left field and and hitting it out towards center field. You know Ben hits it 99 exit velo, same as Sliggers to start the game, goes 398. So he outdistanced him, but problem is that was uh, it took all that on that part of the park. It'll be Keaton Anthony up now. First pitch to Keaton is high for a ball. I liked what I saw from Wilmus there in the leadoff spot. That was a really nice at bat. Well, it really was. You know, he was behind in the count, worked his way, got a pitch he liked. And... Anthony pops this one up to the right side. That one won't go anywhere. The right fielder sprints forward. That's Woods. He's got it two down in the first. You know, and that's, you know, Keaton likes to hit the ball to right field. And, and today's the day that, and, he, you know, he's shown, obviously, a super important home run to left field in, in Texas against Kansas State. But, um, you know, today will be a day if you're going to elevate the ball, elevate it from, from left center over. McCoy deals a strike to Derigi to start off Brennan's at bat. Yeah, you're right. Everything's got to go over to the left side. It, it's a great opportunity for Iowa hitters. Nothing in one pitch on its way home. That's a breaking ball low and outside for a ball. You know, Hawkeye lineup coming up is a bunch of guys that like to pull the ball yep. and hit it hard that way. So 1-1. In on the knees on Derigi, two and one. You look at the upcoming lineup. Hopefully sooner rather than later we can get to them with Huxdorf, Tello, Peterson, and Honar. Those are all guys that can go out to left and left center. Might see Huxdorf in this inning as it counts three and one to Derigi now. Hey, you know, we've talked about free bases are going to be super important today. Um, have 
Outside corner there, three and two. Played a big role all season long, but um, today, especially with um, you know with pop flies that can turn into home runs, you don't you don't want those turning into multi-run yep. home runs. Three two up and in, and there is a free base ball four, and it's up to Huxdorf to make that one hurt a little bit. Interesting, the uh, Maryland defense went full shift there when uh, when. Iowa ties it up one to one. We'll be back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. your way. Go Hawks. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, this Iowa's premier luxury hotel, an the Jill Armstrong team, Wisconsin Realty, the area's the premier realtor, and options experience, your preferred of local Iowa. roofing and exterior company, Jill Armstrong and her team, strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real, real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team, Wisconsin Realty, for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. Keister leading off the second. First couple of pitches from Langenberg missed the zone. It's 2-0. and oh. Went through a little bit of, of a bumpy road there in the in the bottom of the first, but Derigi walked, and then Huxdorf with an RBI double to tie this one up. So a, a new game. We get to the second. Langenberg unable to find the zone on the first three pitches, and so the count is 3-0. and oh. 
to Keister. There's one that's oh. up and in for ball four. Thought maybe the zone would expand there, but it did not. And Keister leads the Terrapins in walks. I mean, just hitting 250, just but good eye. And does a good line. job and led, leads off the inning well for Maryland. It's going to be one of those types of games, isn't it? Back and forth. <laughs> you just kind of have that, that feeling. Got the scoring started early today. Here's Bobby Zamarzlak. First pitch fouled back into the net. Think about Keister. Do you got any speed over there at at first no stolen base attempts on the season so i guess short answer to that is no because he has spent some quality time on base with a 402 on base percentage wow. langenberg kicks the pitch inside one and one we talked about this a little bit yesterday too you know it with the wind blowing out you know, your strike zone today is going to be kind of middle to away there's another one fouled back to the screen. You're going to want to make sure you make sure where your misses are. So kind of you know, kind of adjust where the middle of your fairway is and keep working that way. I come set now. Good breaking ball there. Gets him with a breaking ball upstairs and away. Strike three. Down goes to Marslak, one away here in the second. That'll bring up Hakopian, who was a nightmare yesterday for the Hawkeye yeah, pitchers. Yeah, this seven, eight, nine has been has been really rough uh, against the Hawkeyes. Got a number of hits and runs scored, and they and they set the table for the top pretty well. So, got to find a way to to slow them down. As the first pitch to Hakopian is is fouled out of play to the right side. You don't want to see the top of the order come up in this in this inning. Correct. Because that would mean that there, there's a lot of traffic out there. A lot of traffic or a lot of guys have already trotted around. So, you know, Hakopian hitting 320. Um, you know, kind of really lived that. Showed Bond a few times yesterday. Good pitch there right across the middle for strike two. You know, it doesn't necessarily look like a guy who's going to bunt it and leg out a bunch, but, but sure did yesterday and does have five stolen bases, so. Probably take that off the table now, though. Yeah, counts nothing in two. Here's a ground ball that is just foul down the third base line. Lucky there, fortunate that that one was not a fair ball. Well, and gosh, you know we talked about that a little bit yesterday, where uh, you know sometimes you catch the breaks, and you know Iowa, Iowa in the bottom of the first inning gets a ball, Huxdorf's ball right down the line is is a foot fair, and you know that one's ripped and it's a foot foul, yeah. so. Um, maybe maybe that's a maybe that's a good sign as we look through it and how the game will roll through. No balls, two strikes. Langenberg ready. Long pause. The pitch popped up. Right center field. Wilmus and Huxdorf will come together. Who's going to call it? It'll be Wilmus, and he's got it for the second out of the inning. Again, good piece of pitching there. Really elevated the fastball. You know, 92 mile an hour, right at the very top. Maybe maybe even slightly out of the zone. And so good shape there, and now he'll have a chance to to work around that leadoff walk by getting Orr. So far, pretty good from from Ty. He's got a been the theme of the weekend. Got to finish the deal here, right? Here's Jacob Orr, the eight hitter, right-handed hitter, stands in. First pitch from Ty, breaking ball low and outside. Yeah, you've got a guy that hits 214. His on-base percentage is 283. You can't let him extend the inning. Right. He had a good game on Friday. Didn't do as much yesterday. Nice one from Ty on the inside corner. One and one. It hasn't been uh, hasn't been an everyday guy yet. Does have 17 games and 10 starts. So one one tapped foul off the end of the bat. One and two. Ty's got an opportunity now to get around that leadoff walk. And keep us tied heading to the bottom of the second. One ball, two strikes with two outs. The pitch from Langenberg. Swing and a miss. Got him. A couple of strikeouts again in the inning. Ties already up to four today. We'll go to the bottom of the second inning. Tied at one. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our 
mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. Iowa and Maryland tied at one in the bottom of the second inning, each team with one hit. Maryland's came on a solo home run to start the game from Luke Schliger. Iowa got theirs from Kyle Huxdorf. It was an RBI double for Huck to tie it in the bottom of the first. Maryland held scoreless in the top of the second. What better time than now for Iowa to take the lead? Yeah, we'll work from ahead. Let's work from a position of power again. That was, uh, even though it didn't work out Friday, um, actually, I guess, or Saturday. It's still a little bit more fun to get there, get the lead. Um, going to work that way. And Sam Peterson and his five home runs and 338 batting average is a good guy to get the party started here. Think about how the Hawkeyes could take advantage of a few walks. That's what happened in the first with Derigi walking and then scoring. Peterson taking the first two pitches, both of them balls, 2-0. and oh. That was just McCoy's seventh walk. So, again, doesn't walk a ton of guys, but you, know, you want to be able to see the ball, make him throw strikes. Here's one foul off the catcher. Schlager taking a beating, we, and this one uh, gets him early off the mask. You know, he, did, he did better yesterday. He didn't take quite as many, although he did then the, the Keaton Anthony slide into home plate got him, and so... It, he started taking beatings in a different direction yesterday. 2-1 on the ground to the left side. Past the diving third baseman. LaRusso gave it a good effort, but it's a base hit for Peterson to left. And he's on to start the bottom of the second. So snake bitten. I just kind of expected him to kind of ole snap that up and jump to his feet, but hammered past him and... Petey's on with his eight stolen bases as well. Hawkeyes have not had any success stealing bases this weekend, and with a left-hander, not necessarily thinking this is a great time to add to it, but. Sam Honar's the batter and taps it foul to the right side, and that's more of a, of a tip of the cap to their catcher, right? I mean, they, they've had some good luck in how the, the pitches have come in, right? Where when I was tried to steal, it's been mainly high pitches out of the zone that have helped the catcher, but he's made good throws down there. Honar hits this right on the ground to short. Flip to second. No, he'll take it himself and throw it to first for the double play. Huh. <laughs> he had a little bit of a run over there to the bag, but did so quickly and then made the throw accurately to first. Now two down in the inning. That was a little less fun. Mm. I like the single part better. Eight hitter Michael Seegers is up now. Bottom of the second, tied at one with Maryland. McCoy, the tall lefty, is ready. The wind and the pitch. Seegers squares to bunt, pulls it back. That's outside for a ball. So Michael's trying, trying to find his way a little bit. Average down to 260 now. So it's been for two years, has been the. That one catches the outside corner. Been the been kind of the fixture in that leadoff spot with very few uh, fluctuations, but dropped down into the nine spot yesterday and now eight today. 1-1, one, one, Seegers right back up the middle. There's a base hit. Third hit of the game for the Hawkeyes. This one comes with two outs. Barreled that one up in nice hard ground ball. Yeah, really you know, got it right back up through the middle and just kind of interesting with the, uh, you know, I think both singles today, ground ball singles, but both well hit. And, uh, on a day when uh, you want to elevate a little bit, Iowa's been good line drive start. And sometimes that's the way it works. You start off that way and then 
you make good swings and then let the rest work itself out. Iowa did their damage in the first with two outs. Cade Moss will look to do the same, but swings and misses at the first pitch from McCoy. Down the count, 0-1 with two outs. Runner on first is Seegers. Iowa and Maryland tied at one in the second. Pause from McCoy. He's ready in the pitch. Moss will take that one for a strike at the knees, 0-2. Quick distraction here. I'm not sure if you saw it. Iowa women capped out at, what, 6.5 million viewers on Saturday or Friday, and then just as I see the line starting to form at the doors of, Car of Carver over there. O2's oh, 2s hit on the ground, left side, shortstop charging hard. Throw on the run is dropped at first base. Get back to that point in a second, John. Have to see how they score this one. I don't know. That's going to be close. That was a tie. He was almost going to beat it out anyway. Good hustle from Cade Moss to get down the line. Gave him a hit. Uh, he was really working. Just a, a really well-placed single there as much as anything right in that short third hole. Uh, LaRusso couldn't get over to get it. Shaw had a long way to go. Um, you've seen him a couple times kind of throw uh, almost a ground ball over there. And Hakopian couldn't scoop that one up as the first pitch is a strike to Wilmes. So now it's it's our bottom of the order that sets the table for the top. Wilmes comes up with two on and two out. Nothing and one is the count. Pitch to Ben. That's in the dirt. Blocked nicely by Schliger. No advancement by the runners. Yeah, Wilmes gave a ball a ride in his first at bat. Uh, just hit it to the deepest part of the ballpark there and couldn't quite get it all the way out. Needs to needs to pull one a little bit more. One one pitch to Ben. That's low again. Ball two. This is where his plate discipline can really be a, a strength. Well, I, there are very few at bats that that Wilmer sees one or two pitches. You know, he usually makes a pitcher throw four, five, six pitches at a minimum. Here's the 2-1, swing and a miss. Over the top of that one. Good breaking ball there. Got him kind of down and away, and Ben just went right over the top. Now he'll have to battle back, use his good two-strike approach here. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. McCoy, the pause, the pitch. Swing and a miss. Wilmis goes down on strikes. The Hawks will leave a couple of runners on base. We're through two at Dwayne Banks, tied at one. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Weiner, director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Top of the third inning, tied with Maryland. So far, so good. These teams feeling each other out in the series finale. Was just uh, glancing kind of at the expanded stats. You know, again, you think about Maryland's put the leadoff hitter on both times to start the game here. Scored, of course, in the first with the home run, but I was able to work around it. Yesterday, that was Maryland scored all four times they did that. So Ty finally broke the streak of uh, leadoff, leadoff hitter getting on and then uh, not coming all the way around to score. So to see if we can break the streak of the leadoff man getting on here even better. Yeah, and this one will be even more important, right, with it being 9-1-2 for the Terps here in the third. Langenberg against Lambros. First pitch from Ty. Drifts outside for a ball. Yeah, Lambros doing a good job. 433 on base percentage, hitting 266. So good job there kind of resetting the order for them. Ty started outside, now comes inside with a off speed. Two balls, no strikes. Four-pitch walk to start the second. Don't want to do that here. 2-0, hit in the air to right. 
Wilmis, Wilmis will take a couple steps back, then a couple forward, one down. Yeah, again, the ball is just not carrying that direction really at all. So a little high slice up into the wind, gets away, gets the first out for a guy that does have some power there with seven home runs. Did start for Langenberg, and then, you know, just to go back to Lambros for a second, he's been kind of a wild card. He's a Mr. Do-It-All, all series, really hurt us. Pulled a home run back on Friday. And... Top of the order in Luke Schliger. He let off the game with a home run, just like he did yesterday. Langenberg starts him with a first pitch ball. The second one is a called strike on the outside corner, one and one. You know, and Schliger is going to toe up that inside part of the batter's box, but you're really going to have to command the plate if you leave it out over, uh, over on the outside part. Oh man. Well, see, with a pitch like that right there, it's inside. Schliger bends back like it's about to hit him, which maybe it almost did, but he's also toes to the plate. That ball is a strike. It was a strike. It was over the plate. Here's one found back to the screen, two and two, so we got to two strikes eventually. And the Hawkeye dugout chirping about it, and, and rightfully so. I mean, just because a guy crowds the plate doesn't, doesn't mean that the inside part of it's not a strike anymore, and so he's got to be... He's got to be willing to, if he's willing to stand there, you know, his hands are out over the plate right now. 2-2 two, two, just outside. So you really pinch the zone there uh, when, you t when you allow him to take away the inside half and then don't give him any on the outside. Here's a full count pitch from Langenberg on its way home to Schliger. Popped up, fouling out of play down the left field line. We'll do it again. Particularly on a day like today when you know any you know, he, he golfed a pitch out just like that in the first inning with, you know, a pretty good pitch low and away that, that he hit out. And so if you can't if you can't use the inner six or eight inches of plate, you're in big trouble. Goes outside corner, cold third strike. Got him. Hawks might catch a break there. That was the uh, maybe the one that should have been a strike earlier as he backdoor curveballs him that time and sends Schliger back to the dugout. Five strikeouts for Langenberg so far today. This is a good version of Ty. We're in the top of the third, tied at one. Two hitter LaRusso, he's up now. First pitch drifts low, ball one. You can see a little swag, a little confidence from Langenberg right now. Ty's got a little, uh, a little strut when he moves around and he's confident. 1-0 off the end of the bat, hit foul. To the right side of the screen, one and one. Still got that other ball camped up there. I wonder what it'll take to dislodge that one. Well, there's some storms coming in the area on Tuesday, <laughs> John. <laughs> I'm not, not suggesting we tempt fate with that. Start bending poles around. 1-1. <laughs> one, one. Breaking ball. It's a beauty from Langenberg. Called a strike on the inside corner. One and two. Yeah, threw a great curveball there. He kind of snuck one past him on the inside. See if he works now back away to get strike three. Shakes off a couple of pitches. One ball, two strikes. Langenberg feels it, deals it. Check swing. Did he go? No. Oh, it was close. And it's two and two. I think everybody, uh, everybody wearing black and gold thought that, but um, not sure. Those are those are just so hard to tell. Get him right here. Tie two two. That's low. Ball three. Yeah, you just soon go. You, know, you, you kind of a pick your poison here with with Larusso versus Shaw, but yeah. instead of you go get him, so you don't have a guy on base. Three two just outside, lost him, and so there is a two out walk to Larusso, and we will see Shaw in the inning. You know now battle back, no no harm done yet. Just go ahead and uh, you know execute your plan. They've got a good. Good idea how they want to attack here. And you see how far Shaw is off the plate instead. Now you're going to be able to work that outside part of the plate a little bit. First pitch clips the corner on the outside. Nothing in one to start off the at bat to Shaw. He popped up to tie back in the first. And that was when he came back inside on him. You know, keep, keep showing him the outer part of the plate here. And that's what he's doing. Ty slips off the rubber, and the pitch is well outside for a ball. Yeah, looks like he's fine. Must have just caught a cleat or maybe slid one over there. Langenberg crouches in, looks for the sign. He's got it from Moss. The 1-1. One, one. Ground ball up the middle. Honar dives, but it's into center field for a base hit. Huxdorf picks it up. Throw comes into second. It'll be runners at the corners for Maryland in the third. All right. 
No harm done yet still. Just go ahead and get it out here. Good piece of hitting by Shaw. Again, a guy that hits 353 on the season. You're not uh, you're not going to get him out every time, but you know, ground ball's minimal damage. Great effort by Honar at second. Almost came up with it, but it did get into center. Runner at first, runner at third. Two down in the third, tied at one. Here's Woods, left-handed hitter. First pitch from Langenberg, swing and a miss. The only thing you want to see differently from Ty on that probably was, you know, he threw that curveball again um, and really left it in the middle of the plate, so it gave Shaw a chance to, to go hit it. So as he this at-bat progresses, miss the middle of the plate. Nice pitch on the 0-1. That's the inside corner right there, 0-2. Got to finish the deal here, though, John. 100%. What do you like? You like the backdoor curveball? I do. You, all right. So set up on the outside part of the plate again. Go back door. Nothing in two. The pitch from Langenberg. Runner takes off. Doesn't matter. Swing and a miss. A Terrific two, tie two, through three. three. Another strikeout for Langenberg. He's had two strikeouts in each of the first three innings. We're tied at one. Going to the bottom of the third. Back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Today is the day. After countless hours of research, cutting back expenses, and nine months of anxiously waiting for her, today is the day you finally bring home your new car. It's also the day to protect her with an auto policy from Shelter Insurance. Our policies are competitively priced and include new car replacement coverage if anything were to happen to your new baby. To find an agent near you, visit shelterinsurance.com. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Sunday afternoon baseball in Iowa City tied at one with Maryland. Bottom of the third inning, it'll be Anthony Derigi and Huxdorf. Those are three power hitters coming to the plate for Iowa right now. It's funny how some of those days you just expect. And I'm, uh, I'm never mind. I'm not even going to say it because that all <laughs> double whammy jinx the whole thing. But don't say it then. Not going to say it. Iowa with four hits. Maryland's got two. First pitch from McCoy to Anthony is outside, but called a strike. Wow. Nothing in one. That was absolutely outside. Brings it back in. Anthony chops it up the middle. Diving play by the shortstop. Throw to first in time. My goodness, what a play by Matt Shaw at short for Maryland to get Anthony at first. You could just see that ball wasn't quite hit hard enough that it was going to get through the middle. Um, and it was just a matter of could Shaw catch it clean and make a throw. And boy, did he on a sliding play and threw it right on the money there from mm. out in uh, uh, super short center. Dorigi watches a pitch go by for a strike. Nothing in one. Shaw can do it all. They've got outstanding defenders too. And in the entire series, they've made... Uh, a number of web gem type of plays, one and one's account to Dorigi. When we talked to Coach Heller about you know, separating factors between championship teams, that's something that he really talks about in that they, they make both teams. If you want to be a championship team, you have to uh, make the run-saving plays defensively or, or ones that don't allow teams to set the table. Dorigi's down in the count one and two after fouling off a pitch to the left side. Wind really whipping out towards Carver in left center. Outfield shifting to left center for Dorigi. Swings and misses. Better luck next time for Brennan. He's down on strikes. Just looking funny. Just They only hit uh, their only field 974. So opponents. Error's got to come from somewhere. Where are they at? Four from Shaw, four from Hakopian, four from Keister. So um, nobody has a ton. Middle infield. Uh, middle infield and first base, I'll have four, though, but haven't really seen any indication of that today or this series. Huxdorf in the cleanup spot. He's up now with two outs. The bases are empty. Bottom three tied at one. 1-0 one -oh pitch on its way to Kyle is low and out. Ball two. 
So that's just, you see how when uh, yeah, the at-bats, uh, those edge calls make a huge difference. 3-0 to Huxdorf now. He missed high, low, and outside. So Kyle can get on with a walk. 3-0 pitch right down the middle, 3-1. and one. Yeah, that pitch, uh, the 2-0 pitch, it's called a ball. That was that was strike one to start Keaton's at bat. And so, you know, it's just a uh, different setup. 3-1 off the end of the bat. Huxdorf gave it a ride. Towards the indoor facility, down the line in right, and now all of a sudden the count is full. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. The wind up, the pitch from McCoy. Oh Called third strike at the knees. McCoy works all the way back and strikes out Huxdorf to end the third. We're tied at one. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Woo, got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Top of the fourth, tied at one with Maryland. Ty Langenberg's up to six strikeouts today. He's had the Terrapin hitters fooled with the exception of Luke Schligger, who led off the game with a home run. But Ty's settled in nicely. A couple of walks here and there, but otherwise pretty good from Ty. He's been been around the zone, you know, again, kind of got that strike percentage up in the mid-60s, so really been able to work from ahead, work from position to power for the most part, and, and been able to dictate the at-bats. He'll face five, six, and seven, Keisters, Marslack, and Hakopian in the Terrapin fourth. Now, Keister was the, the four-pitch walk to lead off the second, so see how Ty attacks him differently and better. Langenberg taking quite a long time to deal the first pitch that's driven out to right. Wilmus sprinting towards the line, and it will get down. He dove for it, couldn't quite catch it. Comes up firing, throws to second. It's cut off, and it'll be a double to start. The fourth for Kevin Keister. Good effort by Ben Wilmus, just out of the glove as he was full extension diving for it. Just a perfectly positioned hit there is that ball good fastball low and away keister went with it poked it out into right field wilmer gave everything he had to try to make that diving play it looked like it might have been in his glove for just a second and as he rolled along the turf just opened it up work to be done to prevent that run from scoring first pitch strike from langenberg to zamar's lack on the inside corner struck him out earlier today strikeout would be huge like to uh, like to leave the runner at second here for this out. He'll square to bunt, pulls it back, ball gets away from Cade Moss. He just dropped it, and the runner will get to third. Yeah, I got distracted by the batter. That's just uh, and that's sometimes why you do those things. You know, you you create some some eyes and vision in front of the catcher, and he wasn't able to make the catch. And Hawkeye infield will roll in now with the runner on third and tie game. 1-1, one, one. fouled off of Zamarslak in the box. He hit it right back to Ty, but hit his foot first. As John said, the infield is in for the Hawkeyes and shifted a little bit to the pole side as well. So there's a lot of room on the right side in between Derigi and Honar. Iowa obviously going to try to cut down the runner at home if he takes off on a ground ball. Langenberg out of the wind up the 1-2. Drilled to left. That's a home run. Absolute no doubter. 3 1, Maryland leads. Yeah, he turned on that one. Again, we talked about 
you just you're not going to be able to you're not going to be able to make mistakes in you're going to want to pitch away tried to sneak that curveball past him and I'm not quite sure why with two strikes you just can't leave that ball up and in and he just demolished it hit it 408 exit Velo 105 let's pause 10 seconds for station identification this is Iowa Hawkeye baseball Well, Eddie Hacopian will stand in with Maryland leading 3-1. Pitch from Langenberg's a call and strike on the inside corner. Another two-strike home run, John. <laughs> that, that is incredible. That's their fifth, by my count, of the weekend. 1-1 one, one from Langenberg. Line drive right to Tello. He'll bend the knees and then grab it. One down. And it's not like they're three two pitches either. You know, Iowa's ahead in the count 0-2, 1-2. And that's the, you know, unfortunately, that's the, the, the fine difference in, in winning and losing some of these games is executing your, executing your pitch, you know, getting that out. Um, certainly not giving up a two-run home run out of it. Ty's done a good job after the adversity, after giving up runs, though, to, to get back and, and let that go. Here's Orr. Couple of pitches from Langenberg. First one's a strike. Second one just outside for a ball. He's really been good with short memory, and that's the you know that's the key to it. One one is inside. Ah, call the strike. One and two. He painted the inside part of the plate. Now see if he throws that curveball away again. He does just off the plate, and Orr does not go fishing. Two balls, two strikes. I think it's a good pitch from Ty though, and maybe. Some thoughts about, hey, going with a chase pitch with a 1-2 count. Well, he got over that way, too, where he was expanded the zone. 2-2's Two chopped to Seegers. He'll wait for it, pick it up, throw it, and in time. DeRiggy stretches and grabs it. Two down. You know, or you go back, see if, uh, see if the hitters learned anything or had done a nice job, didn't chase it that time. But then when he came back into him, you know, good, uh, good slider down low in the zone. Chopped it out to Seegers, who makes the play. Bottom of the order with Lambros now. First pitch from Langenberg is at the eyes for a ball. Iowa will have Tello, Peterson, and Honar do up in the bottom of the fourth, trying to answer Maryland. Terps lead 3-1 after the two-run home run by Zamarslak. Here's one lined into left. Peterson's on it. He's got it for the third out of the inning. Iowa gives up two runs on the home run. Maryland three, Iowa one. We'll be back for the bottom of the fourth right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. Tello, Peterson, and Honar do up for the Hawkeyes in the fourth with Maryland leading 3-1 after the two-run home run by Bobby Zamarslak. But Ty Langenberg did a good job after that to limit the damage. Plenty of time for the Hawkeyes this afternoon. Tello will be up first, and he struck out in the first to end it. He's a guy that can get the ball out of here in a hurry over to left center, left field, where the wind is pulling the flags off the poles. McCoy, the pitcher for Maryland. First pitch to Tello. That's high and outside for a ball, 1-0.
Working quickly, the next pitch on its way home. Tello swings over the top of it, one and one. Mm, one one is in at the knees, called a strike. And now one and two to the Hawkeye third baseman. The pitch, check swing. He did not go. Two balls, two strikes. That one was in the dirt. Good hold up there to not uh, swing right over the top of that pitch. Find a way on here. Raider 2-2, two -two, fouled back to the net. We'll do it again. Good battle there. A pitch that was maybe out of the zone, but you just can't trust it, right? You got to swing at it, get a piece of it, live the fight another day. A good sequencing there, too. Shows him one in the dirt, then shows him one up high. 2-2, two -two, that's low and out, ball three. Sam Peterson on deck for the Hawkeyes. Get this party started. Yeah, let's go. Here's the full count pitch to Tello. Got a piece of it, knocked it off the catcher's glove. Schlager couldn't grab it. So Tello will see a, an eighth pitch of the at-bat coming right here. McCoy out of the windup, the pitch. Called third strike. Right down the middle, fooled Tello. Didn't swing at it. He's out number one. Yeah, not sure. Uh, not sure whether he was really expecting breaking ball there or thought that was the changeup that was going to dive. But that was that was a 90 mile an hour fastball that was basically center center. Three strikeouts strikeouts in a row now for McCoy. It's Peterson's turn. Takes the first pitch that goes between the catcher's legs. Ball one. Yeah, Slicker just struggled to find that one. Actually, the, the strike three to Tello, he had a hard time corralling, too. So. 2 0 to Peterson. Now, good plate discipline from the Hawkeye left fielder. You notice from McCoy, he, he works quickly. He doesn't even get close to using up the full 20 seconds. No, and it's, it's interesting watching how pitchers um, have been utilizing the clock. Ground ball hit foul yeah, on the third base side. Some hasn't really changed anything. They just still do their thing. And, you know, some are uh, kind of working the clock a little bit, you know, especially if they can see it. You know, they'll hold it longer, uh, make that batter kind of freeze a little bit. 2-1, two, one, swing and a miss from Peterson. 2-2. Two and two. Good pitch there, breaking ball, outer part of the plate. Actually, that looked like maybe the changeup yeah. in the outer part of the plate. I think Sam's head was trying to look in the windows at Carver over there. <laughs> the 2-2. Two -two. That's outside. Ball three. Got a flinch from the home plate umpire, but he didn't ring him up. Well, that's what, you know, the uh, listening to Coach Marty Sutherland, you know, the, the changeup's the hardest pitch to, if you can't see it, it's the hardest one to identify. There's ball four to Peterson. That one was a hard fastball just outside. Petey laid off. I mean, because that, that's just it. That ball... If McCoy does a good job, that ball's coming out of the same window with the same delivery. So unless you can see something in his glove or unless you can identify it as he's bringing it up and out, um, it's, just a, it's just a difficult pitch to, to see and then has such different action than the fastball. Peterson takes off on the first pitch. It's a called strike. The throw down is in time. Got him at second. Perfect pitch for a strike. Perfect throw down to second, threw it where the shortstop did not have to move his glove at all. It was right where the tag needed to be applied. Peterson out at second. Absolute dime there from Sligger, but I'm still not sure he got him. Love to see a replay on that one, too. Onar hits it on the ground. Foul over towards the on-deck circle, 0-2. This good news is I'll have no idea whether they did or didn't, but boy, it's Looked like he kind of beat that in there, but just more importantly, what a great throw from Slinger. 0-2 hitting to the Iowa dugout. Man, just the dynamic of the inning is just totally <laughs> changed by that. Obviously, you go from one out to two, but I think that Honar's got some pop in his bat somewhere. The 0-2 on the ground is short. Shaw's got it. He'll throw it across in time to get Honar at first. And so uh, a walk in the middle of the inning, but... Caught stealing makes it a 1-2-3 inning, in effect. We've played four. Maryland leads 3-1. to one. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Woo! 
Ooh, got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores, where right now, kids can eat free. Top of the fifth inning already. Maryland leading three to one. Each team with four hits. And Langenberg is out for another inning of work. Ran into a little bit of trouble there in the fourth, giving up a leadoff double and followed by a home run, but settled in after that. I'd like to see what uh, what Ty's got in store for the fifth. Big shout out to the Ohio baseball managers and, and Max Murin today, who threw out the first pitch. Sent one singing in there today at a, at a quarter to track man data, 58 miles an hour, 10, to, 10 inches of vertical movement, and, and darn nearly killed the photographer behind him. If it was a good snag there, I think it was uh, that was it was Pross that had the catching duties for him. But good job from Max to come over and throw out the first pitch. I know we've seen the zone stretch today, but I don't think that Max is. Uh, first pitch would have been called a strike. It was a little bit outside. A little bit outside. <laughs> it required some. Uh... Yeah, that one's inside. Hold on a minute. That's inside to Schliger. Hit him. And so he's on first to start the fifth. Well, and that's, I mean, it, it's a batting approach. I mean, you're, you're going to be, you know, this 14th hit by pitch. Um, and when you sit on the plate, um, and yeah, the ball's going to hit you anyway. I mean, it's inside, but. He's got no chance to get out to get out of the way and and really commands the plate with with his approach. Hit him twice yesterday too. Larusso taps this foul in the box. That one was off the ankle. Didn't feel too good. Sun starting to shine a bit more in Iowa City. Started the day overcast and a little bit chilly. The wind playing a factor with that. But now it's a nice day in Eastern Iowa. Sun starting to shine. Maryland leading 3-1 in the fifth. The 0-1 is lined down the right field line. Get foul. It is foul. Yes. Long strike, 0-2. Let's see if we talked about the, the leadoff hitter issues. We'll see if Iowa, Ty Langenberg can work around that. Now I just sit up here and, and I see how long LaRusso takes to get back in the box there. I don't know how he doesn't get called for that time violation. Throw a pickoff move over to first. I know you weren't at Illinois State, John, but. I have a couple suggestions, but I have a bad feeling what that might do to me if I made those suggestions <laughs> for you. Nothing in two pitch from Langenberg, base hit to left. Hard ground ball in between Tello and Seegers. And a single for LaRusso as the first two hitters on for Maryland in the fifth. And that was, uh, you know, what Coach, Coach Heller talked shot. about, you know, it's a ground ball single, but it's still, it's 103. You know, and again, missing on the inside part of the plate. Um, just, uh, just not a place today where you're going to have any success. Probably the last guy you want to see in the batter's box right now in Matt Shaw. First pitch from Langenberg, curveball called strike. That's one way to start it. Curveball, get out, get out ahead at least now, and and try to control the at bat best you can. Runners at first and second when nobody out. Ty comes set. They'll try a pickoff move to second. Schliggers back in time. Hard pressed to imagine three ones the final. So you know <clears throat> gotta still buckle up the best you can here. Could use one of those hard ground balls, but right to somebody for once. 
Swing and a miss on the 0-1. Next best thing could be a, a strikeout from Ty. He's got six today. He went way back inside there, was yeah. able to get the switch. But again, that's the, you can't miss inside over the plate. You're going to get it inside, get the swing and miss. Well, he had him. Pickoff move at second, had Schliger out to dry, but Ty didn't throw it right away. No, he used the inside move. They could, Schliger went with that vault, vault again, and Ty had him with the inside move where he just slid right back around, but... Uh, and didn't trust himself to make the throw. The 0-2, foul tip, got him. Swing and a miss. How about that for Ty? That's a big one. Good hang there from Cade Moss to, to pick that up. And, uh, you know, nice job from Ty with Sligger trying to distract him and, and uh, split his attention, was able to get a very dangerous hitter on the strikeout. Not done yet here's woods first pitch from ty just outside for a ball got woods really played the pull right it should be a little bit easier here to keep sligger somewhat closer because you've got seegers more right behind the bag although he's got a giant lead again here's a line drive into right for a base hit wilmis charges it hard they're gonna send the runner here comes the throw to riggy tries to cut it off got him and he is safe oh, at home drop the ball Great tag there from Cade Moss to try to catch that back foot. Just couldn't come up with the ball. Derricky tried to cut that off and just and, and either missed it or somehow it got through. And Moss grabbed it, tried to tag him on the go by, but it was not in time. And other runs scored. It's four to one. I've seen a little bit of that too, where you know. You're not really trying to cut it, but you're keeping the guy on second base. And here's another ground ball, this time to the left side, into left field. Runner coming home from third. Here's the throw, not in time, 5-1. Yeah, the worst part about that play wasn't necessarily the play at the plate. It was that both Seegers and Tello went for the ball and nobody covered third base. So then you took away Peterson's option to throw to third, and Adams, or I'm sorry, Woods was able to just go from first to third. Um, in what should have been uh, should have been a pretty easy place to throw him out. Petey came up firing, but uh, I, I think you're onto something there, John. Maryland all of a sudden leading 5-1 in the fifth. We'll have a mound visit from pitching coach Sean McGrath. This time they've done it with base hits, all singles. They started with a hit by pitch, and then a single strikeout, single single. That's how they've got their two runs. In the inning, Terps up 5-1. Mm. Yeah, a little unlucky. You see DeRiggy and Cade Moss talking to each other there about, you know, what had to be, what was I supposed to do there? I mean, a little bit of a, yeah, they're, just, they're talking about whether that ball should have been cut or not. And, you know, catcher makes a call on, on whether he wants it to cut, let go, cut to a different base. Um, so... Whatever their whatever their code was, they're trying to trying to clarify. Terps still threatening with runners on the corners. They squared a bunt, put it down the third baseline. It's a beauty. It'll bring home another run. No throw from Ty. Six one. What a beautiful bunt there from the DH. Ty slipped off the mound a little bit again, and he kind of falls off toward first base and. Tello was nowhere to be found back there. The Hawks are in a world of hurt here right now. Bullpen getting uh, active down the right field line. Runners at first and second. And they're going to go to the bullpen right now. Maryland leading 6-1 with one out in the fifth. They've scored three already. All of a sudden, they've got eight hits, four of them coming in the inning. That'll do it for Ty Langenberg today. Top of the fifth inning. Terps up 6-1. We're back after this pitching change break. Listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. 
At Oatmole, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmole.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Well, new pitcher into the game for Iowa. The Hawkeyes trailing 6-1 to one in the fifth, and Maryland has runners on first and second with one out, so we'll go with Jacob Henderson. Appearance number 10 for Jacob, 4.05 ERA, six and two-thirds innings, couple hits, three runs. They've all been earned, four walks, nine strikeouts. And it'll be up to, up to Jacob to kind of put a stop to this so that uh, the hill doesn't get to be too big for Iowa bats to come back. Well, on a day like today, you know, you can piece some things together. Iowa's got one run on four hits, but Maryland, this has been their big inning. They're up 6-1, six runs on eight hits. Got four singles in the inning, so it hasn't been the extra base hits that they had early in the game. Now it's just been death by a, a million pins. <laughs> yeah, the uh, you know, the one ground ball was, was sharply hit. You had another one that just kind of rolled through. You had a bunt. Um, but unfortunately, that's what uh, that's what good teams do is they they find something and they they just keep putting their foot down and that's you know it's it's up to it's up to Iowa and it's up to Jacob Henderson and then it'll be up to the bats to uh, uh, remove the foot yeah. <laughs> and start uh, start progressing forward. Hakopian is the batter. First pitch from Henderson whips it in there for a strike. Nothing and one. Runner at first is Zamar's lack. Runner at second is Keister with one out in the fifth. Yeah, Hakopian's shown, a, shown a, a willingness to bunt here. Tello back now. 0-1 outside. Floated the breaking ball, 1-1. One and one. Significant gap in left center. Oh, Henderson with a great pitch there. Spun him into the dirt on a breaking ball. Swing and miss. The Copian felt like home run number three was in his sights, Oof. but holy cow. That might be the most aggressive swing I've seen all weekend. Let's see what Henderson has up, up his sleeve for the one-two. It is on its way home. Outside with the breaking ball. Two and two. Aftia fooled him so hard with the last breaking ball. I, Why not? Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, that's the, the good part there for Jacob was, you know, he threw it off the plate. You know, he didn't make a mistake over the plate, got it out away, just didn't get the fish. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch, swing and a miss. Got him on the low and inside corner, out number two. That's where Jacob's really good is just that, that variety of speed. You know, he'd shown him 75, 76, and away, away. Um, bust him back in on the hands, probably inside, but comes in at 84, and you're able to just kind of slow his bat down and, and get it into his kitchen a little bit, and he can't get around on it. Still one more out to get in the inning. It's the eight hitter Jacob Orr, right-handed hitter, first pitch from Henderson, low and away. Moss backhands it, knocks it down. Really good block wow. there from Moss, kind of caught that off the heel of the glove, but. You know, with Jacob kind of with that little you know, three-quarter to sidearm sling, um, when he misses and kind of pulls it outside, it's it's a tough catch for Moss, but a good job. Ooh, the one I was up and in for a ball. Two two balls, no strikes. Yeah, we talked about it when Langenberg faced Orr. You know, just a 214 hitter, 283 on base percentage. 0 for 2 today. Um, Got to go get him. 
2-0 is just low. Got Lambros on deck. He's hit a couple of fly balls for outs today. And finally, that ball dropped down from in between the net and the pole. <laughs> just took, a, took enough, finally, got enough wind shimmy finally to get it to, uh, to drop. Three balls, no strikes. The pitch from Henderson. That's an inside strike, three and one. It's interesting just to watch the difference. You know, that pitch on with Schliger as he was covering it, you know, you, you didn't get the inside part of the plate. Now with Orr covering that, he got it on this call. 3-1 is low. Ball four. Mm, close. Orr's got good, he's got a good eye, I guess. Guy that didn't want to swing the bat. Yeah. <laughs> Center fielder Eliza might, might have had might have had red red still on three one yeah. there. Terps up six one in the fifth, and Elijah Lambros will come up with the bases loaded. Two outs though. Pitch from Henderson, slow roller in there for a strike. Big high breaking ball there, up and away. Just caught the top of the old tic-tac-toe board again. A one outside with the slider. Tried to go. To see if see if Lambros would go after it. All right, try, kind of tried to go to the same spot. Realize, hey, the last one got called. You know, you put one in that slot again and break it off there, and see if you can get the hitter to to bite a little bit. 1-1, one, one, goes with a fastball in the outside corner. 1-2. and two. It's kind of what you can learn about a hitter as a pitcher early in the count. You can get away with throwing a ball that maybe is too far out of the zone and say, okay, that, that's pretty much out of the plans now if he's not going to swing at it now. You're going to see it again here. Ooh, and he swung <laughs> at it and missed it. Got him. That was the fastball. He set him up with that and figured, I'm going to show it to you again now. And, and that one, he started it in the same tunnel and broke it away. Good strikeout, good sequencing from Jacob Henderson. So Maryland will leave the bases loaded, but they did a ton of damage. They lead 6-1. We'll be back for the bottom of the fifth right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great but they're not always great for us because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down, not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skoglin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit thehotelatkirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. Seegers, Moss, Wilmis do up for Iowa in the bottom of the fifth, trailing Maryland 6-1. Plenty of time to get back in this one. Why not start right now? A lot of time. Conditions are obviously uh, still very generous to hitting, so it's just up to Iowa hitters. Maintain the discipline. Nobody has to do everything right now. Just do your one-ninth, find a way on, and, and chip away at this. Seegers taking the... Pitch for a strike on the low and outside corner. Michael with a single in the second. 0-1 pitch. Same right back spot. up the middle, off the pitcher, right to the shortstop. Poor throw to first. Is not in time. And Seegers will beat it out. Shaw didn't have to throw it like that. You know, he had a little bit more time than I think he thought. Well, and he's done that a couple times where, you know, he really tries to take advantage of the turf and just kind of throw a just throw a ground ball, basically. And um, didn't have to be quite that energetic about it and uh, took Hakopian up the line, who then tried to sweep tag. And um, I tell you what, though, with the way Iowa's had their luck the past week, 
I wasn't surprised at all that that deflected off the pitcher right to the shortstop. I was 100% sure Seegers was out at first. Based uh, wholesale, on what's going agree. On. wholesale agree. Wholesale <laughs> agree. It, it, Just was, the way it's been going. Yeah, there was no doubt that, that he was going to get him at first base. But. Cade Moss is the batter. First pitch strike to him. Yeah, so good job, uh, good job from Seegers there hustling down the line. I was just about to say that was the exact same spot that he hit yep. it the first inning or second inning, his first at bat. Moss taps the 0-1 foul. 0-2 just feels like Maryland's thrown a lot of first pitch strikes that, that Iowa's taken for the most part today. You wonder if that changes in the, in the late innings. For as long as we see McCoy, he's back out there for his fifth inning of work. I don't know how much longer he'll go. He's up to around 70 pitches. Nothing in two is the count, the pitch to Moss. That's in the dirt, blocked by the catcher. Good change up there, down low. Good job from Moss, though, to identify it and, and not, uh, not swing at it. But again, that's where sometimes you'll see guys get punched out because if that's the fastball that starts that high, it holds its line and, and uh, makes him kind of look silly. But One, two, shot into shallow center. It's a base hit, dropping in front of the center fielder. Seeger's heading from second. He'll go to third, and he'll head first slide in there safely. Cade Moss with a little weak flare into center, and the Hawks are in business in the fifth. Good job there. Just uh, didn't uh, didn't get all of it. Got jammed a little bit on the inside fastball, but was able to, to fist it out into center field. And you know, sometimes those work out better. You hit them hard, and you you get it to where the outfield's playing. But in this case, was able to bloop it in front. Good piece of base running there from Seegers. Read it well and was able to get all the way to third. Nobody out. Runners on the corners for Ben Wilmis. First pitch strike. But again, that's that changeup. You know, you're just you 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 really don't want to swing at that as much as uh, much as you want to be aggressive early in the count. If he can throw that changeup for a strike. A one is just low. Ben lays off that one, and that pitch, if he swings at that, that's probably going in the ground somewhere. 6-4-3 double yeah. play. And I mean, and that's the hard part with, you know, you know, kind of a sinker changeup guy. You know, that's 1-1. One, one. That's too far outside, 2-1. and one. If he executes, he's tough to, you know, he's tough to string a bunch of stuff together on. And so, you know, now Ben's got to count maybe a little bit more in his favor, see if he can get a fastball that he likes and hit one hard. That's in the dirt. He's not going to swing at that. Three balls and a strike. You know, wasn't wasn't willing to offer it that at the changeup again. You know, started at his knees, and you know that ball's going to drop out of the zone if if you if you're disciplined enough to lay off of it. Good job. Runners at the corners with nobody out in the fifth. The pitch to Wilmis. Line drive. Foul ball. Good cut. Couldn't put it between the white lines. Iowa trailing Maryland 6-1. Big pitch coming right here. It was really dying for him to be sitting on that fastball and just wasn't able to get, get around and get squared up on it. McCoy looks in for the sign. He's got it. The pause, the pitch. Line drive, right field, and foul ball. Good battle between McCoy the leadoff man, Wilmus. And Anthony's they, on deck. And they don't have really anybody. They've got some guys doing some stretching, but nobody's throwing yet. So 3 2. That's high. Ball four. Good job, Benny Wilmus. Bases loaded. That's the high outside strike you sometimes see, but not, uh, not this time. And that'll give Keaton Anthony a shot with the bases loaded. Hitter, Keaton. All right, Keaton, your time to shine here. Iowa down by five. Can get a lot closer with what we're all thinking about right now, but just find a way on. Nobody out in the inning. McCoy will go back to the windup. The first pitch to Anthony. That's low. Ball one. You know, he's really working that working that changeup angle again. That one had a little bit more, a little bit more spin and action. 1-0, hit on the ground a second, oh. through into right center. One run is in, here comes another. Wilmus headed for third, and Anthony drives in two. We'll see how it scored. The second baseman, Keister, waited for it, and then it went right under his glove on the hop. He didn't body it up. What a lazy play there from Keister to just kind of, you know, we've talked about this number of times here through the season, but 
<laughs> infielders playing that ball off to their side, and that's not even a good side that he's going to be able to turn the double play on. So get in front of that ball, get your feet set so you can turn two. Instead, he just kind of ole whiffs it. Doesn't yeah. even doesn't even touch it. Call it an error. Two runs in for the Hawks, and they're in business. Six to three is the score. First pitch strike to Brennan DeRiggy with runners on the corners. Still nobody out for Iowa in the fifth. Down by three. We are just talking about how good the defense they've played. 0-1, oh, fouled back to the screen. 0-2, oh, DeRiggy just missed that one. Middle up. 89 mile an hour fastball right in the center of the zone up high. And again, that's one mm. of those pitches that kind of surprises DeRiggy because so few people come anywhere near the middle of the plate or in on him. 0-2, oh, line drive into center. It is down for a base hit. That'll bring home another. Will Miss will touch home. Runners on first and second for the Hawkeyes. Here comes Kyle Huckstorf with Iowa down two. Shaw tried to sell it, but he had a play on it, but ball floated up over his head. And Hawks in big business now. Send Sligger out to have a chat so that uh, pitcher who's just started to throw can get uh, can get more action. We're going to probably see a lot of the same arms we saw yesterday, as you look at the uh, as you look at the statistics in the Maryland bullpen. They don't have a a lot of other guys that they go to, so um, you'll kind of see the same same crew more than likely. Did we? I can't remember if we saw him yesterday. You see him yesterday, Haberthier? Yes. He's the one that got hit by the Oh, pit. yes, that's right. Ended up leaving early. Basically came out of the game after that then. Yeah, as he caught the 107 exit, Velo got the guy, got Keaton Anthony at the plate. Corners in. Time called. We have a balk. A balk on McCoy. So now two in scoring position and nobody out for the Hawkeyes in the fifth. Iowa's answered Maryland's three runs with three of their own in the bottom half. Trailing still 6-4. A base hit can tie it. First pitch to Huxdorf. Ground ball over the third baseman's head. One run is in. Come on, DeRiggy. He whips off the helmet. Here comes the throw. It's cut off. And we are tied. Yes. Here we go, Hawks. What a... You know, what a beneficial hit there. You know, we've talked about it a couple times where it doesn't feel like we're uh, we're catching very many breaks. You know, that one just a turf chopper that goes right over the pulled in third baseman's head. Drives in two. Good hustle puts him out at second base. Hawks have a chance for the lead and we're going to the bullpen. Five runs for Iowa in the fifth and we're tied at six. Hold on a minute. We've got a pitching change for Maryland. Not done yet. Still nobody out in the inning. That'll do it for McCoy. We finally got to him. And the Terps will go to the bullpen. We'll be right back after this pitching change break. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hey, everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all High V Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and High V stores where right now kids can eat free. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust or water spraying from an area or you get dizzy or queasy leave the area immediately then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away see midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips paid for by the customers of midamerican energy what a comeback effort by the hawkeyes in the fifth inning with four singles, a walk, and an error. Everybody's got on to this point. Nobody out in the inning. We're tied at six. New pitcher for Maryland is Nate Haberthier. Just making sure that was uh, Haberthier's making his eighth appearance. 587 ERA, two and two on the season. 23 innings pitched, 26 hits allowed, 17 runs, 15 are earned, nine walks, 25 strikeouts. Another one of those guys going to be right around 90. Uh, slider change up. Um, I feel like you know you just got to try to get that. Uh, he's you, know, you want him to elevate that fastball. It's going to try to drop down. 
pitched yesterday through two thirds of an inning. Hawks got a couple hits off of him, uh, scored a run, a walk, strikeout, left the game after he took the line drive. Uh, Hawks had the bases loaded, line drive off of him. He did a great job uh, to kind of at least recover his wits enough to, to throw Anthony out at the plate and then had to leave the game after that. Iowa's caught fire in the fifth, tying this one up at six. Haberthier's a tall righty, so different than McCoy, who was a left-handed pitcher. Huxdorf is out there at second. Nobody out. Here's Raider Tello. First pitch, low and out, ball one. Don't be done yet. No reason to be, right? No Keep reason playing. No reason to be done, I assume. Haberthier's probably got a pretty good bruise on him from somewhere, so we'll see how he yeah. stretches out and gets loose. One ball, no strikes. That's the count to Tello. And here's the pitch. That's low, but called a strike. Right at below the knees, one and one. So electronic strike zone that maybe? Kind of okay, because <laughs> if it touches it, it's a strike. Tello can golf at that one and, and get a barrel on it, though. He seems to like the high stuff, but I'm with you. He'll, he'll, get, uh, he'll make good contact anywhere. The 1-1, one, one. he squares DeBunt, puts it down the third baseline, oh. but it's going to kick foul. Good try from Tello. And now the count will be one and two. Is that the first time we've seen that from him? That was a fantastic bunt. Just really a good. A little unlucky there. And straight up bunt for hit, too, because he had shifted his feet to angle it and then sprint to first. Sent it too far foul. Counts one and two. Nobody out in the inning. See if he can extend the at-bat, move Huckstorf over at least. Aberthier comes set, takes a deep breath. The pause in the pitch. That's low. Ball two. Raider didn't go after that one. Good job there to not expand the strike zone. I mean, that's the, you know, that's the idea. You throw that breaking ball, it looks good, and then the bottom just falls out of it. Ready with the 2-2. Two -two. It's on its way home. Line drive. Base hit into right. Huxdorf rounding third. He's going to score. Hawks lead. Raider Tello gives it to him. Seven to six. What a comeback from Hawkeye hitters. I mean, we were kind of uh, kind of down and out, and you're wondering where it's going to come from. And Hawkeyes roll out the six pack here in the bottom of the fifth inning. <laughs> Still nobody out. and Might as well just keep right on going. Seven to sixth in the fifth. The game that was low scoring through four. Hawks have put up a half a dozen. Sam Peterson's the batter with Tello at first, still nobody out. First pitch to Petey, called strike right down the middle at 80 miles an hour. What a ch I mean, what a change up there to throw that pitch to start with, and uh, again, not one you're probably expecting on the first pitch to. To middle middle long pause here's the delivery that's outside Peterson not swinging at it one and one now it gets interesting with the Hawkeye uh, the Hawkeye pitching staff you know yeah. Hendo is not usually a multi-inning guy you bring him back out I know Kate Obermuller was warming up check on Tello at first didn't have a mighty lead and so he He's able to get back there. And we saw Nick Gatilla yesterday, Luke Llewellyn. We saw Christofferson. We saw a lot of Hawkeye pitchers yesterday. Volker's off the board, you would say. <laughs> Volker, <laughs> Volker, Brody, and uh, um, what probably Marcus. Um, They're probably not going to go. Yeah, Keaton's not coming back in. So you, Otherwise, I think it's a... Uh, uh, if I need you for an out, I need you for an yeah. out. If I need you for four, I need you for four. Yep. Go get them. Counts one and two to Peterson. Tello with a good lead at first. Here's the delivery. That's low and out. Two and two. And Tello did a good job. Had two strikes. Was able to, to you know, avoid chasing one and then uh, bounce back when he got a pitch he liked. We'll see if Petey can do something similar. Perfect day to hit for Sam. Mm -hmm. This is his type of day. Two balls, two strikes. The delivery, low and out again. Ball three. Peterson wanted to swing at it, but he didn't, and it's a good thing. It was way low and out. He fought off his urges to not swing at that changeup there as he's down and away in the dirt. 
Not sure how he was going to get a piece of that one, so good thing he stayed away. So now the count is full. Peterson choked up on the bat. The 3-2. That is low. Ball four. Below the knees. Second walk of the day for Peterson. Maryland has not been able to get him out. And now we'll see Sam Honar, who all weekend has really crushed the ball, but just right two people. Yeah, he's had the hardest luck um, you can imagine. I mean, it just... Yeah, he, well, he's the one that hit it off Haber Theory yesterday. Yeah. Um, and so just uh, no luck around. Had had a couple of those where just tortured one right at somebody for an out. Runners at first and second for Honar. Swings at the first pitch. Drives it deep to center. Get going, baby. It's at the wall, and yeah! it's gone. Home run. Sam Honar. Boom. Man, <laughs> I think you called that one as you've talked about how hard a luck he's had. And, and I've got to admit, as I was watching uh, Lambros track that back, and so sorry to, uh, sorry to jump on the call. I was just afraid of Lambros going up and making, <laughs> pulling that silly thing back in. And once he gave up on it, I got pretty excited. So good job there from, uh, from Sam to stick with it. And uh, what, boy, what, what a Nine guys to the plate, nine runs scored. Let's just start the inning over for Michael Seegers. That's what it's going to be. Iowa leading 10-6. to six And have batted through the order without getting anybody out. Without recording an out. So, yeah, we are, we're right back where we started, <laughs> uh, whatever it was, 10, 15 minutes ago. But uh, we like the score line a whole lot better. Seegers will square to bunt down the third baseline, trying to beat it out. The throw is in time. Got him at first. By a quarter of a step. Oh, no. Maybe an eighth. <laughs> Maybe a knot. Mm. Oh, boy, was that great. Th great play by uh, great play by Larusa though, to come up and barehand that, throw it across. But, uh, ooh. So Seegers is out at first. Cade Moss is the batter. He'll take the first pitch for a strike on the outside corner. Moss singled and scored his last time up in this inning, in the fifth. <laughs> Outside corner now, 0-2. Iowa has pushed nine runs across in the fifth. 0-2 to Moss. Line drive down the left field line. Fair ball into the corner. Get going, Cade. He's headed for two. And it's a stand-up double for the Hawkeye catcher in the fifth. As much as I'd like to tell you the game's, you know, 10 runs is enough, I'm not convinced of that. So there's no reason to stop that. That's yet. right. Let's just keep, uh, keep, it rolling. keep adding a few on here. Iowa's offense has been the constant this season. Always rely on the Hawks to score some runs. Scored nine in the game on Friday. They've scored nine in the inning today. Back to Wilmus at the top of the order. Hawks up 10-6. First pitch to Ben. That's low, ball one. And this is who, as a, as a pitcher, you probably don't want to see right now because Wilmus is just... Well, he's just wearing pitchers out with it, you know, making them, making you throw strikes, making you work. Um, I'd almost love to see a little push bunt here from Wilmus. Push wow. it right up the first base, second base side there. 1-0 pitch. Ooh, swing and a miss over the top of it. One and one. Good change up there. He's kind of dropped right off. Hawks, Hawks really have to see it. Haberthier changes his arm speed when he throws that change up. So, you know, whether you can identify that in time, but he really makes a, makes a distinct difference. 1-1, one, one, low and in for another ball. One out in the inning. Moss at second. Wilmus today, 0 for 2. Struck out in the second, but he walked and scored earlier in the inning. Wilmus calmly standing in the box. The 2-1. Chopper, left side. Third baseman jumps to grab it, collects it, throws it. Safe at first. Great hustle there from Benny Wilmus. Just motoring down the line. 
Looked like the same play that Seeger's got punched out on, so I guess we win the second coin flip. And there, there is nothing you can do as a third baseman there. You gotta wait for the ball to come down. It's not about charging it or waiting back for it. It's gotta come down from the sky. It got up there so high. Right, that's just the turf, uh, the turf single, and we'll get a we'll get another change here. We'll get another bullpen guy. But yeah, that's your your only option there, and you're just come down, come down, come down. And uh, again, while Wilmus is just zinging his way down the line. Keaton Anthony will be the next hitter, and he'll face a new Maryland pitcher. We'll see who it is right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. The big inning continues for the Hawkeyes in the fifth. Leading Maryland now 10 to 6 out of nowhere. Hawks are up by four after plating nine so far. Not done yet. We've got runners at first and second with one out. New pitcher for the Terps is lefty Andrew Johnson. Appearance number six on the season. He's 1-0, 450 ERA. He's only thrown four innings, given up four hits, two runs, walked seven, struck out five. Mm. So, wow, most of the Maryland guys we've We've seen trotted out to the mound today have exhibited fantastic control. Johnson, um, maybe not, uh, maybe not quite so much. But again, as we talked about, they've kind of thrown the same guys over and over. It's going to be hard to imagine going back to them again a third day in a row. So you're going to have to see uh, see a couple new faces along the way here. You'd think. Reading off those stats, the free bases could could pile up here. First pitch to Anthony right down central. Nothing in one. So they go back to a lefty. A high 80s fastball here. Curveball change up. Slow to the plate, so Hawkeye base runners might have a chance to move. A one to Anthony. That's high and out, ball one. I think the message has to be to have that plate discipline, and then you can get the you know, couple of free bases and then the big fly to make it hurt even more. Two on. For Iowa in the fifth, just one out. The 1-1 one -one to Anthony drives it deep to right, carrying but then stopping up in the wind and caught by the right fielder, Woods. As Moss will tag from second to third. Runners on the corners with two down. Here's DeRiggy. Boy, he creamed that one. It's just not going to you know, go in that direction today. It's just still not uh, not a big big day to carry that way. As off the bat, it was 97. It's, Thought it thought when he hit it, it had a chance, and it just got into that wind, hit a wall, and dropped right uh, dropped right down to Woods. Good lead at first for Wilmus. Moss here at third. First pitch strike to Derigi on the outside part of the plate. Counts nothing in one with two down. Iowa leading Maryland 10-6 in the fifth. Johnson comes set. The pause. Here's the delivery. That's low, but called a strike. That was in the zone. 0 and 2. Catcher really snapped it up, didn't he? Yeah, and it really wasn't that low, but uh, you know, Slinger really kind of aggressively framed it. <laughs> yeah. Felt like he needed to, I guess. Counts nothing in two to the Hawkeye first baseman. That's too far outside. Brennan won't swing at that one. One and two. You know, good job of of showing him a fastball. Lefty on lefty here. Shows it, pulls over the top, and goes out that way. One ball, two strikes. The pitch to Derigi. Breaking oh. ball. Called third strike. Outside corner. 
confused him a bit and got him, but the Hawks score nine in the fifth and take the 10 to six lead to the sixth inning. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Iowa with nine in the fifth to take a 10-6 lead over Maryland, trying to avoid the sweep today. And we'll get to the sixth inning. It's been a while since we've seen the Hawkeye defense out there. We'll go with a new pitcher into the game. It'll be Cade Obermuller. Cade's 2-0 and on the, or I'm sorry, 1-0 and on the season. Seventh or eighth appearance. 386 ERA, nine in the third innings. Giving up four hits, seven runs, four earned, five walks. 18 strikeouts. You know, he's... Uh, God, there's times where he's just been absolutely electric and times where he's been where he's been a little bit of a freshman. So we'll kind of let him work through that and, and come into a good spot here where, uh, you know, where if you can, get, uh, you can get two innings out of him, maybe three, that'd be great. That'll be the top of the order. Here's Schlegger who stands on the plate. First pitch, chopper to the right side. DeRiggy charges it hard. He'll have to flip to Obermuller. Dropped it. And so the leadoff man is on for Maryland in the sixth. This is when you need that shutdown inning, that uh, absolutely big-time zero. Take a little work to get that done now. Tough break there for Cade. He was, he was there. He did everything he was supposed to do. You know, the things you worry about is, is how, do you, how do you cover base? How do you do it? He's there as he kind of stuck his foot out to the base. It was, it was just awkward as he yep. got there and, and uh, almost jarred the ball out of his own glove. LaRusso, the batter, first pitch strike from Obermuller, the left-hander. Crafty freshman. Yeah, Kate's got good, good velocity. You know, he's gonna be he's gonna be in the low 90s. Kind of little three-quarter action on it. No balls and a strike. There's a fastball right down the middle. Nothing in two. Yeah. The, Talked about a lot uh, the response, you know, how to. Mm -hmm. Ty Langenberg did a good job for the most part responding when he had some adversity. Now you need, you need Cade to do the same thing here. He's got the sign he likes from Moss. Ready with the 0 2. Here it comes. Shot foul to the right side, out of play. Maryland is 5 for 6 today with leadoff hitters on base. Yeah. And really, and they've scored in three out of the five innings. Prior to, no balls, two strikes. Obermuller ready, the pitch. Popped up, foul into the stands over to the right side. Good job there, got it in on his fist. Just kind of cue balled it out as LaRusso was kind of diving out over the plate to try to get to the outside one. And instead, uh, kind of worked on the inner, ha inner half of the plate. Go for a chase pitch here. Hasn't thrown a ball yet. Here's one line to Seegers. It's short. He's got it. Out number one. Went in on the hands with a the slider there. Really went, yeah, dropped him right back inside. You know, we've seen that. K does a really good job with that kind of back foot slider. Uh, you know, today's a tough day to throw that pitch because if you make a mistake with it, bad things can happen. But, you know, with LaRusso diving out over the plate so much, he was really able to bust him in, got it off the fists, and Soft liner to Seegers for the first out. 
Shaw's the batter with a runner at first and one out. Obermuller taking his time. First pitch, slider in on the shins, ball one. Good pitch there. Again, tried to, tried to basically do the same thing, dive it back in there on Shaw. Use a ground ball here, John. To someone. Yeah, right to somebody. On the infield. Yes, 1-0, that's low. Ball two, Obermuller's a, is a ground ball type of pitcher. If he keeps it low, His change up slider. Yep, and, and does uh, does tend to tend to get it around in the, in the right locations there, again, with kind of that little sidearm sling. I need to get on. Uh, Feels like the clock's going. I wish we had a clock here. Yes. It's going to be really close. Here's the 2-0. Check swing. Didn't matter. Called strike. High portion of the plate. 2-1. and one. Good bounce back there. Good regroup. I'm with you, though. I'm, I'm kind of surprised we don't have a clock somewhere. But uh, I've, I've heard the story about it. There was some, some discussion about it. Um, you know, of course, supply chain stuff and, and how temporary it would have to be. 2-1, that's low, ball three. I've always wondered about that, though, because that would mean that somebody up here in the box would have to start it. And what if that's not the same as when the umpire starts it down there? Well, but that's what, make a signal? Yes, yes. When we were in uh, Texas, um, I, kinda, I heard how they were talking about how the guy starts the Got clock it. there. It, it, is a, it is a signal from the home plate umpire. Obermuller has to bring it home on the 3-1. Here it comes. Slider, high, ball four. Maybe not the worst thing, but well, we're into that. We're into free base territory right. again. You know, we've given up the air. We've given up the walk now. Um, uh, you know, and we're still with a 15 to 20 mile an hour wind blowing out. So you know, you just you just can't put extra guys on base. Um, you've got to got to bear down here and and get out of the mess. Cleanup hitter in Woods. With one out, runners on first and second in the sixth. First pitch strike from Obermuller outside corner. Iowa leading 10 6. Hawkeyes with 12 hits. Maryland with eight. You know, Hawkeyes really punished Maryland for their error in the bottom of the fifth inning. Yeah. 0 1 pitch slapped foul to the left side. 0 2. Go get him, Obi. Got an out here. We've got a hitter maybe a little off balance here, so good chance to finish off an inning. Slider here outside. Yeah, I like it. Chase pitch out. Just out a the thought. Way. Nothing in two. Oh, they'll have to throw it over to second. Kate will hold on to it. Thought about a pickoff move. He spun off the mound. Schliger's got a decent lead at, at second. And he was very aggressive with Ty back there. So freshman still needs to focus on his business here to pitch. Moss is set up outside. Oh, threw it into center field on a pickoff attempt. And both runners will advance. That's the kind of stuff right there. So now you take away the double play and puts more pressure on you with less than two outs. You know, Obermuller's made a couple throwing errors to bases as he did that uh, in his first start. He had a throw to first base that he threw away, too. And, you know, you're still ahead. This batter doesn't mean anything. Go get him. The 0-2. Ground ball to the left side. Seegers will backhand it, bobbled it, got no play. Run will score, 10-7. That right there, that whole sequence, the last about minute, just brutal. Well, because... The way the Hawkeye defense was set up with runners on first and second, Seegers was playing a much more normal shortstop. And if he's playing a much more normal shortstop, he makes that play. Um, as it was, you know, he's able to go flare it down and, and keep the runner at second. But um, this is this is all self-induced. And that, that's the worst part of this inning right now is is – you had them. You had them down and out, and and you've gave them every reason to believe that that they're still in a baseball game right now. Started with the error, and then a, a line out to Seegers at short, then a walk, but then the throwing error into center field, trying to pick off a runner at second on an 0-2 count too. Right. With with one out, you, you throw away the double play possibility. You just. 
trying to go for a strikeout instead. And now Maryland is, we don't get that shutdown inning. Well, and you're ahead by four. The, the, the base runner on second does not hurt you. I, I mean, ideally, yes, he doesn't score, but, but if you get an out and he happens to score along the way, no harm done. It's 10 to seven and, and they still can't tie you up. Now, problem is it's 10 to seven and now all of a sudden the tying runs to the plate again. Runners at first and second with one out. Keister is the batter. First pitch from Obi is outside for a ball. We've got a football score here with it being 10-7, Iowa with the lead. And I think you heard Coach Heller talk about this in pregame today was, you know, this. 1-0 is high for a ball. It's kind of a mindset and it's an attitude and it's a, it becomes an anger level for the pitchers of I've had enough of this. You know, I'm just not going to do this anymore. Yeah. And now a hitter's count for Keister. Two balls, no strikes, the pitch. Right down the middle, called strike two and one. Good bounce back there. Keister's a guy, again, that likes to walk. Um, you know, just 250 on the season, but, but tons of walks. 23 coming into the game. I think he's walked at least once today. Um, so you gotta, gotta go get him. The two one, high ball three. The risk of loading the bases. The Hawkeyes with some activity in the bullpen. Yeah, I think if you see Hope a walk. Don't have to go to the bullpen. Yeah, if you see a walk here, I think you're gonna see Young or Whitlock. I can't tell which one that is for sure. Here's one found back to the screen, and it is three and two. This Hawks really just looking for. Hawks need strike throwers right now. Got one on the mound. If Cade could get a strike out here, that'd be big. With one out in the inning, three balls, two strikes. He's got the sign that he likes with runners on first and second. The pitch outside. Ball four. The bases are loaded for Bobby Zamarzlak. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Now stick with Cade. Bases being loaded. And one out. So Marslack is the batter. He's home run. He's hit a home run today. First pitch strike from Obermuller. Really good pitch there. You know, Cade's been in a couple tough spots this year and and has come out and excelled on in some of those spots. You know, the, the finish up in the ninth inning at, in Lubbock, you know, there's some spots. So he can get this done. A one pitch, that is high, ball one. Iowa 10, Maryland seven. This is about the score we expected today. High scoring, we're just over halfway through it. One ball, one strike, one out, bases loaded, the pitch on its way home, ground ball, off of Cade's glove. Seegers will pick it up, he's got no play, and the run scores 10 to eight. The Hawkeyes cannot catch a break. He's just gotta stay out of the way of that ball. Let Seegers pick that up coming through. Uh, but yeah, hey, hard to fault a guy for effort, but. Uh, First baseman, Eddie Acropia. Man. He knocks that ball down, and, and so it takes away the play for Seegers. Bases loaded still. One out, 10 to eight's the score now. Batter is Hakopian. First pitch from Obermuller. That's in for a ball. Mm. Hakopian struck out his last time up in the fifth. More of that. Yep. More of that. Start with getting to two strikes first. One ball, no strikes. The pitch. Ground ball. Seegers has got it. He'll flip it to Honar for one. On to first for two. Double play. Yes. <laughs> you kind of hoped it. And that's a, let's give Kate Obermuller some credit there because instead of flailing out of that ball, he pulled his hand back and recognized that I need to stay away from that. 
Wasn't a great uh, a great ball to turn two on. Seeger's good flip, Honar high throw, but but transitioned it quickly, got out of the jam. Iowa 10, Maryland 8, headed to the bottom of the sixth. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Weiner, director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. I finally got one of those double plays, John, to get us out of trouble. Yeah, that uh, that that could have been a whole heck of a lot worse. Is it? Uh, you know, it kind of felt like the wheels were wheels were about to fall off the car there. Man, <laughs> and, and not sure we were going to go all the way to the nine run inning, but we were going to give most of a, the good news back and a good job there to get out of it and and uh, you know just limited to two and Maryland cuts the lead in half. Well, you had said that 10 probably wasn't enough, and, and now I I really feel confident about that. Why not add to it? Still leading by two, 10 to eight, but we got a long way to go on this one, bottom of the sixth. Huxdorf is the batter. First pitch low and out for a ball. The pitcher is Andrew Johnson. A lefty out of the stretch, 1-0. Huxdorf swings and fouls it back. If you remember yesterday, the struggles that both teams had with Runners on base, runners in scoring position. Huh. Uh, no, no such trouble today. Mm -hmm. Maryland hitting 6 of 11. Iowa hitting 5 of 10 with runners in scoring position. 1-1 one, one to Huxdorf's in the dirt. 2-1. and one. Similar good numbers. 8 of 17 with runners on base. 8 of 14 for the wow. Hawkeyes with runners on base. So, yeah, when it's one of those been able to, to pile it on today. Two balls and a strike. Pitch to Huxdorf. Took it right down Main Street. Two and two. Yeah, Huck kind of probably was looking at, I think, think maybe that was change up. Instead, that was fastball and just kind of stayed right there. So He'll wait for the 2-2 offering. Here it comes. Check swing. He did not go. Full count. I love how the duck out just sells that, man. <laughs> they were all up yelling, cheering. <laughs> Part of the job description, isn't it, the, uh, being a teammate? 100%. 3-2, Huxdorf pops this up. The catcher will give Chase in foul territory to the right side, and he caught it. Good One down. Good snag there from Sligger. Not sure. That's got to be Hakopian calling him off that. It's a much easier play for Hakopian coming in, but um, Sligger stuck with it and was able to make the catch. For Schliger to be able to come out of his stance and locate that, because he looked in the wrong spot at first. He looked over to the left, and then he came back to the right and was able to locate it in the air. Great well, play by him. Well, it's got to be a pretty high sun, too. So. Yep. Batter is Raider Tello. First pitch ball to him. There's your other fun stat for the game. We scored 18 runs, one two-out RBI. <laughs> Not typical. 1 0 to Tello. That's inside. Hit him. So Raiders on first. That was just an unusual pitch. It didn't look like it was that far in, and all of a sudden it bounces off of him. And it came in on a straight line, too. It didn't look like it had a lot of break. Yeah, it just, just got right in there. You know, moved six inches or so. Just didn't really, didn't really sweep in and get him. Just was there the whole way. So after Huxdorf pops up and out, Tello's on first. Here's Peterson, first pitch way outside for a ball. 
Obviously, we talked about it before. Petey's a pretty good guy for this type of day. Maryland has been unable to get him out today as he rips this foul. The opposite side of the field, nothing in one, uh, rather one and one to Peterson, but uh, Sam singled in the second. He walked in the fourth, walked in the fifth. Yeah, he had an absolute rocket yesterday that uh, got swallowed up by the wind, so I take one of those again. Here's the 1-1, one -one, gets to the backstop over the catcher's head. Tello will get to second base in scoring position with one out. Sligger has been an absolute rock star behind the plate, but even that one finally goes just zinging way too high over his head, and he can't make the can't make it on the 90 mile an hour fastball. But he anything that's been in any version of a catch radius, he's kept around it right. in front of him. Two and one is the count. The pitch driven into right field, carrying a bit, but not quite to the track. And the catch is made in right. Tello will tag from second to third. Yeah, just not the, not the, again, not the direction the ball's really going to fly. 90-mile-an-hour fastball down low. Petey drove it out there well, but um, that's, kind of the, that's kind of the dead space today. That's where it went. It, it'll just carry it to the deeper, you know, portion, right? It'll funnel it towards center. Right, it just put, it pushes it into the alleys, which then makes makes it all the all the longer it has to go. Right, batters Honar, and that one is outside to start his at bat. He hit the three run homer back in the fifth. It's fun watching the about twenty minutes from tip off, twenty five probably by the time they actually get to it. Parking lots filling up around here. 1-0 to Honar outside, 2-0. You got the watch party at Carver. National championship for the Iowa women's basketball team today. That's on the line. They'll Say that again. Say take that again. on LSU. Say that again. <laughs> it's in the dirt ball, three. Got to say it as many times as we can, right? Yeah. Uh, not often that. It, I mean, it's really hard to get into a national championship of, of anybody, yeah. of any sport. You know, I've seen field hockey there a couple of times or at least a time in my lifetime. And obviously wrestling feels like they have a, a chance to win regularly, but. 3-0 pitch to Honar is in the dirt for ball four. Runners on the corners for the Hawkeyes with two outs. And here comes Michael Seegers. I think the stat was 26 national championships uh, as a university, okay. team championships. 24 are wrestling, one is field hockey, one is men's gym. Okay. So the breakdown that is relevant. <laughs> well, and again, men's gymnastics is a is a different type of sport either. Or also, it's not one of those one on one. Yep. You know, it's the hey, we've got to go compete and put up a team score over the course of these events with four or six other teams there. Seegers will try a bunt, pulled it back, and the pitch is a ball. You know, right. field hockey is the is the one time where it's this is the championship game. It's the head-to-head -head championship opportunity mm -hmm. and that, that the Iowa women uh, have now today with basketball. One ball, no strikes, pitch to Seegers. He'll take it for a strike. Outer half of the plate, one and one. Runners on first and third for Iowa in the bottom of the sixth, up on Maryland, 10-8. to eight. Be interesting to see. I would guess the Hawkeyes would make a pitching change for the top of the seventh, but let's get a little more separation here first. Michael will take that downstairs for a ball, two and one. I believe that's Aaron Savory getting loose for the Hawkeyes. I thought that too, which good for him. And Coach Heller did mention to you in the pregame again about maybe trying some different arms, giving some guys a different chance. Yep. Two balls and a strike. And I'll check on the runner at first. Honar is back there without a dive. You know, and you see that every once in a while. You, you throw that change up over to first base. Throw and, me away. Yeah, and then something bad happens. So I'm, I'm a big fan of just a wasted throw for the opposition. <laughs> yeah. Nothing, nothing good is going to come from it. 
Seegers will take this for a strike at the knees. Honar scrambles up to second. Uncontested, there was no throw, nobody covering. So now two in scoring position for Michael Seegers. Come on, Michael. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Iowa up two. Find some green out there, Michael. The pause from Johnson, the pitch. Lifted it in the air to left. It's not gonna have enough to carry out of here. It is caught in front of the track by Orr, and Iowa will leave a couple of runners on. Taking a 10 to eight lead to the seventh. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and hy -Vee stores where right now kids can eat free. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. Top of the seventh inning, John Evans, John Leo in the broadcast booth at Dwayne Banks Field. Iowa leading Maryland 10-8. to eight. Kate Obermuller will come back out for another opportunity to pitch for the black and gold in the seventh. He'll face 8-9-1, and one, or Lambros, and then the top of the order with Schliger. Just feels like, let's get this first guy out, John. <laughs> Well, I, Try yeah. to have a no-stress inning. I know it's Iowa easier has, said than done from the broadcast booth. Iowa hasn't had very many of those today on the defensive perspective. But, you know, again, Orr talked about it a number of times with him today. You know, he's hitting 205, 286 on base percentage. We walked him last time and uh, fortunately left him out there. But, um, you know, go get him. 1-0 pitch. There it is on the outside corner from Obermuller. Everybody else has got a little scary in them. I mean, this, he really, at least if you're going to line everybody up, this is the least scary guy. Sure. So go, go attack him right now, and especially with a, with a two-run lead. The 1-1 popped up, shallow center. It might be even in on the infield. Honar goes back. Seegers goes back, and Honar finally grabs it. He was backpedaling in front of the black Tiger Hawk in shallow center, and he's got it out number one. That was close. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, that one I wouldn't quite say is an outfielder's ball just because of how shallow it was, but it hung up there a long time and you can get to a ball that you're more comfortable catching. Lambro steps in, first pitch to him on the outside corner there. It's a beauty from Obermuller. I was watching that pop up into the outfield and I didn't really track it. Got to lean forward here to see it. And I saw Seegers look over at Honar, you know, as they were both running to it. It was about to come down. I thought, oh, boy, well, Michael doesn't have it because he just took his eye off it. So it's <laughs> got to be Sam. He was able to make the play. Counts one and one to Lambros, the nine hitter. Well, I think it must have gotten that kind of, we talked about we can't quite see where the sun is, but must have kind of gotten right up into it. You could see Honar battling it the whole way. 1-1 one, one pitch just off the plate inside, two and one. And that's a tough hang, too. On a pop-up that's carrying. You don't want to fiddle around here. Lambros, the guy, 24 times walked or hit by pitch. Mm. But you need to go get him. Don't let him set the table for the top. 2-1. Nice one from Obermuller right there. High in the zone, 2-2. Two and two. Be interesting if he leaves him in. If he can get the out, if he'd still leave him in for Schliger, I think normally lefty-lefty is a good matchup. Just off the plate outside, went with the back door slider. Lambros did not offer. The count is full. Really good pitch, just barely missed away. Yeah. 
That's one that you just hope he swings at. Not going to be called a strike. Yeah. 3-2, <laughs> out of the windup. Obermuller's ready, the pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him to swing over the top of it. Two down. Really good. Brought that one in. You know, that's that That's that controlled back foot. You know, that, that ball is going to be a strike anyway, but you know, you're bringing it back into that side. Um, as tough as it's dropping in there. You know, two, two and a half feet of vertical break as it comes through the zone there and still moving a foot. Yep. You know, so I mean, a lot of good stuff there. We'll go with Obermuller against Schliger. First pitch, strike on the inside corner. And basically, Schliger's, Schliger's point to the umpire is if that hits the inside of the plate, it's going to hit me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's not, right there he's not far it. from wrong. Nothing in one pitch. He'll go with the outside corner this time, 0-2. If Schliger wondered where the outside corner and the inside corner of the plates are, he just found he out. He found them. <laughs> Slider away. Just keep it. Don't, yes. Don't give him anything he can touch. The 0-2 just outside. Went with the fastball, but good spot. I like the idea. Yeah, that's good high fastball. And, and again, so now you, you've shown him that ball in the tunnel. So, you know, do you throw, do you throw kind of the same looking pitch, but now break it off a little bit? One ball, two strikes, pitch from Obermuller. That's out there again, two and two. Too many waste here. Yep. Kind of let Schliger get back into the at-bat. Because now you've now you got to be a little bit more particular here. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Obermuller feels it, deals it. Got him. Got him. Called third strike. Down he goes. The Terps go down one, two, three in the seventh. We'll stretch things out. Hawks up 10 to eight. Hello, Freshie. That was pretty good. Good, uh, inning. good inning from Cade. Good job, Cade Obermuller. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After I drop the kids off, I have to run across town for a meeting, hit the gym during lunch. Jake has soccer tonight, and Emily has gymnastics. Oh, did I turn on the crock pot this morning? <laughs> With a never-ending to-do list, it's easy to forget something important, like setting up a life insurance plan with Shelter Insurance. Your local shelter agent can show you how to create a safety net for your family. Don't let life get in the way of what's most important. Visit shelterinsurance.com to learn more. Shelter Life Insurance Company, Columbia, Missouri. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Bottom of the seventh inning, Iowa leading Maryland 10 to eight, trying to add to their lead as we get to the late innings. And this is where things have fallen apart for Iowa uh, in the first two games of this series. And so with that being said, and knowing that, hey, let's get some more runs right now before we have to go back out on defense in the eighth. Well, and we've, we've talked about it where, you know, you're, you're 0-2 this weekend and, and, you know, you lost the midweek game. So three straight. And, it feels like the sky's falling me into the world. Every every chicken little thing you can come up with, but you know I was been in both games at the end, and so now it's um, uh, now you need to close it. You know because biggest lead you've had late in the game, and and so go get it done here with the bottom of the order. And to your point, I'm still not 100% convinced that 10's enough. So. Um, you know, adding a few here would be good and, and make the six, last six outs a little smoother. We'll see Johnson again in this inning. 9-1-2, Moss, Wilmis, Anthony. First pitch decayed is low, ball one. Kate's had himself a day today, so let's see if he can uh, keep that going here to lead off the bottom of the seventh inning. That's downstairs again, 2-0. and oh. Got to imagine that that was the strong message from the coaching staff in the dugout, you know, just out in front of it before uh, getting into the batter's boxes. Hey, not done. Let's keep it going. Well, not done, and this guy's a little bit of everywhere, so make sure he comes into you and throws strikes as Cade goes after the 2-0 pitch and fouls it off. But, you know, make sure he's... 
Make sure you get, if you swing at a pitch right now, you make sure that it is in the tunnel you think it's going to be in and you commit to it and get after it. Two balls and a strike to lead off the bottom of the seventh. Pitch to Moss. That's high, ball three. You know, Johnson in five appearances has only thrown four innings. So um, he, he's, he's basically extended by his own standards so far this year. Here's one lined into left, but caught by Orr. Moss golfed it, didn't have enough top spin to drop in front of him. Yeah, couldn't sit, couldn't uh, couldn't hit the old tennis top spin lob there. But you know, Johnson did start four games last year, so uh, but in 17 appearances, still only through 19 and two thirds innings. So he's not a guy that um, is going to go a, a, probably a whole lot longer here. But he, he did a pretty good job in the sixth against Iowa, and so. But to your point, this would probably be it for him unless Iowa can force him out a bit sooner. Wilma swinging for the fences. Comes up empty on the first pitch. Yeah, that would be ideal. Let's just force him out yeah, a little earlier. Don't give him the decision to make, right? Yeah, that would be a no-doubter. Johnson's at two innings now. Still hasn't given up a hit. A one pitch dropped downstairs. It's one and one to Wilmus. Wilm is solidifying himself in the starting lineup. It's asbestos. Tell my wife. 1-1 <laughs> one, one is up and in for a ball. Something fell out of the ceiling of the press box right under your computer, John. Yep. Speak, We're speak, covered in here. What's going on? Speak highly of me when this stuff, <laughs> this stuff happens. <laughs> Two balls and a strike to Wilmis with one out in the seventh. Iowa leading 10-8. The pitch. Swing and a miss again. Two and two. But again, I know he swung and missed twice, but what I'll take is he hasn't even cheated on either one of them. Very good cuts. Good aggressive cuts. He saw the ball. He, he saw a pitch he liked, and he went after it. He just didn't make contact those times. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss again. Good job there by Johnson. Got Wilmus down on strikes, two down. Second strikeout for Johnson. See if Keaton can keep it going here. We'll find, try and find his first hit of the day. Isn't that something? Out of all the hits that Iowa has, 12 of them, Keaton is not responsible for any of them. He did reach on an error in the fifth. That was a big deal, too. It was. First pitch to him, high pop-up on the infield. The shortstop, Shaw, waves everybody off, and he's got it for the third out of the inning. The Hawks go down one, two, three in a quick seventh inning. We'll take it to the eighth right after this. Hawks up 10-8. We're back with more Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Top of the eighth, Iowa 10, Maryland 8. New change for the Hawkeyes defensively. Go with Braden Frazier into the game and right. Ben Wilmis will come out. And Iowa trying to hold off the Terps in what's been a, a game very similar to Friday. Kind of back and forth, big innings here and there. And uh, a Hawkeye lead late, which has happened in all three games of the series. Terps were able to take the first two. Crucial game for Iowa this afternoon. Obermuller returning to the mound for another inning. Two, three, four. Big part of the order for the Terps. First pitch strike to LaRusso. 
A big spot. Cade cruised through, cruised through eight, nine, and one. So now he's uh, gave himself a spot here, put himself in a good position to try to get through three more outs. Wow, wicked slider that's fouled off to the left side. That thing was like a boomerang. 23 inches. Man. <laughs> Nearly two feet of horizontal break, if that's any good. He busts it right wow. in on his hands. You're not going to get a barrel on that one. 0-2 oh, from Obermuller. That's high. All right, ball one. Just kind of got under that fastball and elevates. It's kind of what you see with that sidearm delivery three-quarter delivery every once in a while everything kind of drops and he just launches it almost one ball two strikes the pitch that's outside two and two you know, one of the things you hope that he kind of kind of learns and adjusts to as he's as he's trying to pick and nibble is you know maybe not trying to be quite so fine on those and pick his spot outside and and just go throw something close to it Ooh, inside almost hit him and now the count's full. I, I get what you're saying. I, he gets to 0-2 a lot, right? Right. And then, and then chase pitch, and then maybe one a little bit closer. But still not a strike. Right. Now you're 2-2, two -two, then you miss with 3-2, and now you've got to come back. Well, he does come back. Strikes out LaRusso. Couple extra pitches in between, but got the job done. Good job, Cade. A fantastic job of coming back and getting the out. And, you know, as a as a relief pitcher, probably not as imperative. But, you know, as he moves into a role that he's probably going to be destined for eventually as a starter, uh, you know, having that be a three or four pitch at bat instead of six becomes pretty important. Now it's Shaw. Obermuller operating out of the wind up. First pitch, Bender called strike. Another at giant breaking ball. Thing started in the opposite batter's box. And then a sharp break. Nothing and one, the pitch. Ground ball, Honar is there. He gloves it, throws it, two down. Under two on the ground ball again, but uh, Hawks had him played perfectly just off, the, just off the right field side of the mound. Honar's right there, is able to pick it throw it across easily finish the job Cade eighth inning two down bases empty the batter is Woods Obermuller goes with a first pitch strike on the low and inside corner Iowa leading 10-8 Tello probably needs to be alert here we have seen Adams mm. pull pull and show bunt and be a good way to lead off the inning here Obermuller missing outside to Woods, one and one. Obviously, I know he's not leading off the inning with two outs, but to try to lead, you know, create that first opportunity and bring the tying run to the plate. Yep. Deep breath from the Hawkeye rookie on the mound. The pitch, swing and a miss, one and two. Just challenged him up and in there, went right at it with a 91 mile an hour fastball up in the zone. Slider. Slider away. All right. One ball, two strikes. Obermuller ready. Feels it. Deals it. Just high and outside. Ball two. Went with the fastball. And again, now, now when you're starting to talk about it, that's the that's the pitch you want when you're ahead one and two. That's it's competitive from an umpire standpoint. It's competitive from a hitter having to swing at it standpoint. Just didn't quite catch it. Here's the 2-2, swing and a miss, got him! Again, yes, Obermuller takes down two in the eighth, Hawks lead 10-8, time for some insurance. We're back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust or water spraying from an area or you get dizzy or queasy leave the area immediately then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away see midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips paid for by the customers of midamerican energy Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, 
Hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Bottom of the eighth inning, Hawks lead 10-8 to eight in search of some insurance to grow their two-run lead over Maryland. It's Derigi, Huxdorf, and Tello. I mean, those are guys that can get the job done, but so can anybody on this Iowa lineup today. Yeah, those feel like, those feel like insurance, but uh, let's we'll see if Johnson's up to just about this, for this first pitch of the at-bat to Derigi will be 40, so Hawkeyes have seen him now through, and... and uh, Hopefully they can put a dent in him here. Lefty on lefty matchup to start the bottom of the eighth. Pitch to Derigi. That's in the dirt. Ball one. Both teams scored a run in the first. Neither team scored in the second or third. Maryland added with two in the fourth, three in the fifth, before Iowa put up nine in the bottom of the fifth. 1-0 pitch to Derigi. He'll take it down Main Street for a strike. Maryland since then has got two in the six to make things a little bit closer. We are in the bottom of the eighth on a sunny day in Iowa City. Johnson's ready, the 1-1 pitch. That's low and out again, two balls and a strike. Long pause on the mound. Pitch on its way home. That's outside, 3-1. and one. DeRiggy very patient as a hitter. He's already drawn a walk today. Singled and scored in the fifth. He struck out a couple of times today as well. DeRiggy's always got full patience mode going. Three balls and a strike. That one's low. Ball four. Good start to the eighth for Iowa. First runner aboard to get the get going to get you on your way to insurance. That's what, uh, that's what you're looking for. How often do we see leadoff walks hurt teams, whether it's us or them, right? Uh, that's probably going to be, well, can't remember. Is he the hook or is he not the hook? Well, he took off his jacket, so we have a mound visit. <laughs> it's a hook because it looks like somebody's coming over to the, no, that's a different guy coming to the fence. So. Well, the Maryland's dugout, the, the players in their dugout have come out in front of it. It should lead you to believe that it's it for this pitcher, but nobody's made the call yet. And now they will make the change. So the Terps are going to the bullpen in the bottom of the eighth after a leadoff walk to Brennan DeRiggi. We'll give you the information on the new Terrapins pitcher right after this. Iowa leading 10 to 8 in the eighth. Back with more. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team of Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit the Hotel at Kirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. Bottom of the eighth, Iowa leading Maryland 10 to 8. Leadoff man is on, courtesy of a walk. That's Brennan Derigi. Kyle Huxorf will be the batter against a new Maryland pitcher in Nigel Belgrave, a righty. Good outing there from Andrew Johnson, but uh, Nigel Belgrave comes in. Second appearance of the series, 12th on the season, 3 0, 3.52 ERA, 15 and a third innings. 12 hits, 8 runs, 6 of which are earned, 8 walks, 22 strikeouts. He's going to come up there. He's going to bring it again. He's going to be low 90s, 92, 95, somewhere in there. Good, uh, good heat, but just a two pitch guy. Then with a slider coming after that. So going to want to kind of get up, crowd the plate a little bit and see if uh, 
They could do some damage on him. Two run lead in the eighth. Kate Obermuller has come in, done a nice job pitching for Iowa. You wonder, I don't know if you can stick with him again, but who knows what Iowa will like to do when we get there. Hopefully have a few more runs on the board. The batter is Huckstor. First pitch from Belgrave way outside, ball one. I was a little surprised they went back out with him the inning before last. Right. He's mowed down six hitters since, so he's maybe settled in and found a groove, so you almost go ahead and give him another shot, but let's, let's, let's add to the pile here first. 1-0 pitch, breaking ball, nice one. Called strike outside corner, 1-1. One and one. Derigi's the runner at first. Yeah, that was an outstanding slider there. Yeah. Just up in the zone, kind of middle part of the plate, uh, the outside. 1-1 one, one pitch, off the end of the bat, foul to the right side. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, and then he comes back at you with 94 like that, so good mix. Uh, good mix, that little little floater, and then comes back with the hard stuff. You got to be, got to be alert and ready to roll. Protect now with two. They're going to set up on the outside corner to Huxdorf. The pause, the pitch, ground ball up the middle, base hit. Derigi rounding second. He's going to stop right there. An aggressive round, but he'll hold at second. First two batters are on for the Hawks in the eighth. I really thought we were going to see Big Rig just keep right on going, but. He had it all sized up in front of him and kind of the roller up the middle. No need to, you never want to make the first out at third base, so let Tello have a swing at it here. Tello's got on the last two times he's been up. He singled in the fifth, was hit by a pitch in the sixth. First pitch to him. Ooh, outside, but called a strike. It's all right, Raider, get a better one than that. Yeah, he can't. Uh, if you're, if you're going to get that one called a strike, you're better off carrying your bat back because the best you're going to do is ground into a double play. Now so. he squares the bunt, missed it, didn't pull it back, and it's 0-2. Went with that slider again. Yeah, good pitch there. Almost in the same spot, a little bit lower. Trying to move the runners to second and third. We'll see if Raider squares again with two strikes. Doesn't appear to be the case. He's going to swing away. The 0-2, line drive, base hit into left. What are they going to do with Derigi? They're going to wave him. Here he comes. The throw is cut off. They'll throw it home. It's way late. The run scores. RBI single. Raider Tello, it's 11-8. Kind of an unusual throw there from Shaw. Uh, you'd think an experienced guy like that wouldn't, wouldn't waste that throw to the plate. Had no chance as Orr's throw. Um, you know, wasn't wasn't a competitive. I'm going to get you at home throw. Shaw didn't even really have his feet under him and still flipped it toward home plate. Um, Again, another one of those throws where only uh, only good things can happen from a Hawks perspective. And still in business here for Petey. Well, Peterson bunt doesn't appear to be the case. First pitch outside for a ball. Runners at first and second for the Hawkeyes in the eighth, leading 11 to eight. Nobody out in the inning. I know it happens both directions, but it's, it's still amazing me how many times you see a guy not get a bunt down and then produce with the single. Misses high for ball two there with that one. Missed with the fastball up. See if the Hawks can just keep piling on here. Two balls, no strikes to Peterson. The pause, the pitch. That's low and out again. Ball three. Good fastball there, just uh, just barely missed that low outside corner. Downstairs on the 3-0 pitch, they'll be loaded for Sam Honar. Don't hate to see that. Really break this thing open, John, almost a, a dagger with a, an extra base hit. From your mouth to Sam Honar's bat. Let's get her done, Sam. How do you play Sam if you're the center fielder? He's shifted into the left center gap. Honar swings and misses at the first pitch. That one was low and out, and he chased it. I don't know how you shift Sam because he can pull it to the right center gap. He can push it to the left center gap. That's where he took his home run earlier today. We've seen most teams play him to pull. Yeah. 
0-1, Honar, swing and a miss. 0-2. Good fastball there, again, right on the lower half of the zone. Belgraves really just went flat attack mode here, which I guess about have to, so um, he's been very successful so far on the first two tries. Honar's got a bit of a, a hole in his swing on the outside corner. Infield comes in for Maryland with the bases loaded, the 0-2, that's way outside. Good stop by Schliger. Well, it's a little bit of that uh, it's a little bit of that pull mentality. You know, everything's kind of coming up and out a little bit. And so if he doesn't, you know, there are times where you really see him stay on it and he can drive that ball out into left center field too. One, two, yeah, chased it again. Outside corner, swing and a miss. Okay. Foul tipped it. Schlinger did a good job to catch it because I sure thought it, thought you could hear Kind of all the multiple, multiple bounces there, but I guess if we catch it clean, still off the dirt, it's still. This is big time for Seegers. We've had the bases loaded a couple of times, at least a pair of runners in scoring position a couple of times this weekend. Just run into some bad luck. Michael needs to find a base hit. First pitch is low and outside, gets away from the catcher. Here comes Huxdorf. He's safe. Great hustle there. We've talked all weekend long about how good Sligger's been behind the plate. That one, not even the worst one he's he's seen, but gets away from him. And Hawks will take the extra run. That'll be a pass ball. That wasn't l necessarily too low. It was outside, away from Seegers, but Hawks up 12-8. Infield. Now has to come back in for Maryland. Runners at second and third. 1-0 pitch. Seegers popped it up. Right side, first baseman in foul territory. He'll reach up and grab it. Two down. Mm. Uh, it makes that wild pitch just that much more, that much more important because obviously that was not going to, uh, was not going to and didn't advance anybody. And so, um, you know, that, that's where it, Free bases, you know, yeah. free bases by biting Maryland there. All right, bottom of the order with Cade Moss. He's had a very good day. Three for four this afternoon. First pitch to him is on the outside corner, but called a ball. One more. Or both. I don't, I don't care, but I don't, let's, let's, let's get, get one more. Yep. 1-0 pitch to Moss, breaking ball, called strike at the knees, one and one. Runners at second and third for the Hawkeyes in the bottom of the eighth, leading 12-8. Tello, taking a, he's got a good aggressive lead there. If it, any ball down in the dirt, he's going to have a chance. Belgrave ready the pitch. Moss hits it foul. Count will be one and two. I'm not sure. I don't know whether you're going to get Cade yeah. or whether you get Chad. It's a mystery. Not sure which one. One ball, two strikes. Pitch to Moss. Again, another foul ball out of play to our right. As always from Cade, getting a good at bat. Could have an even better one if he gets on. Here's the one, two. Down the right field line, it is foul. It just kind of fisted it out there. Hoping it was going to find uh, green grass between the lines, but just drifted foul. He's hanging tough, isn't he? Yeah, he's got the average up to 310 now. One, two, ah, chase that one out of the zone. Couldn't hold off on the slider, and that'll do it for the eighth. Two more runs for Iowa. It's 12-8. to eight. We'll try to close the door on the Terps right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it that knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down, not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular and the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. 
and we bring the best minds together to collaborate. So there's more brain power focused on you because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. Well, the question during the break was who is going to get the first crack to close the door on the Terrapins in the ninth? We got our answer. We're going to stick with Kate Obermuller. Good for the freshman to get a chance to close it out. I really need this game to end because as the baseball game, as the basketball game starts, I'm only going to get more and more choked up. So we just might as well go ahead and get this, uh, get Cade to close this out. And women's game's just about to tip. Keisters, Marslack, and Hakopian. First pitch from Obermuller is a call and strike on the outside corner. Good start from Obi. Out of the windup, Obermuller's ready. The pitch, outside corner again, two strikes. Love Cade just attacking here. Good to see him right on the uh, right on the plate. No balls, two strikes. The wind, the pitch. Oh, up and in, almost hit him. Ball one. All right, you scared him off, Cade. <laughs> He's not going to lean out over the plate now. Now you can backdoor. Can backdoor curveball him again. Moss flashes the signs. Cade likes it. The one, two. Swing and a miss. A Out number one. And that was basically what he did. He set him up, up and in, you know, kind of get him back up high off the plate and then pulls him right back down. Throws that pitch on the outside and just kind of fans at it. Cade's got the first three leadoff men out. It's a nice breaking trend. Yeah. First offering to Zamar's like way outside for a ball. Got to the backstop. And this will be pitch 60 for Cade. So nice number, not too many. Wind up the pitch. Got the hands going, didn't swing. Maybe he should have. It was a strike, one and one. You think about his outing in general, you know, the first pitch to Sligger that he throws is a is an out at first base that he drops and kind of causes some angst and it's been pretty good since he got out of that crazy jam as he misses high there. I think we need to... As, as long as it ends the way it's, it's headed, we need to remember this outing from Obermuller in terms of the trickle down for the whole staff just to see somebody be out there so confident in, in their ability. The 2 1 on its way home. Swing and a miss. 2 and 2. You just feel the confidence from Obermuller right now, and, and everybody in the bullpen, everybody in the rotation has the ability to throw strikes for the Hawkeyes. Just didn't really see it in the first two games of the series. Two balls, two strikes, Obermuller, the pitch popped up, right side, this is playable. It's DeRiggy, he's camped, he's got it, two down. Really good pitch there again, got that fastball in on the hands, and we talked about it, if you're gonna, if you're gonna come in, you gotta really mean it. You can't miss it, you can't miss into the middle of the plate with the way the wind's blowing today, and he got that inside, got it in, inside, missed the barrel, and Hawks are one out away from Salvaging Sunday. Down to the final chance for Maryland. Batter is Hakopian. First pitch inside from Obermuller. One oh delivery on its way home is just inside ball two. Ooh. Not sure what Hakopian's question is. I know what the Iowa dugout's questioning is. The umpire looks over and gives him some indication, but and no harm done. Come back and battle now. 2-0. There's the slider. Really good. Came in the back door without knocking, two and one. Really good breaking ball there. Slides it all the way across. And of course, Hakopian doesn't really doesn't really matter quite yet. He's gonna take that pitch. 
2-1 offering. Went back to it, but a little bit too far outside. 3-1. and one. It's a great pitch when you're ahead 1-2. and two. When you're down 2-1, and one, it's going to be able to lay off that one. So now you're going to have to come back, find the white part of the plate here, and get it done. Here's the 3-1. Tapped foul to the left side. 3-2 and two now. Hawkeye fans will rise to their feet. Maryland down to their final strike. Iowa up 12-8. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Obermuller feels it, deals it. Ball four. Just misses wide with the fastball there. Jacob Orr. Hawkeye women up. Caitlin Clark, of course, has an early three. Hawks up seven to three. Minute Good start. Half, minute and a half in. Batters Jacob Orr. He stands in with two outs. Runner on first. Hawks are up by four. First pitch strike. Yeah, just got to gotta go right at Orr here and just attack the strike zone. 0 for 3 today with a walk. Obermuller takes his time. The 0-1 delivery just outside. Went with the backdoor breaking ball. One ball, one strike now. Really good pitch from Cade there. Or's 0 for 3 today with a walk. The 1-1. Line drive, foul ball down the left field line. Again, Maryland down to their final strike. A little surprised. Then. Now DeRigio go play behind the runner. No real, if he, wants to, if he wants to cartwheel his way around the bases, no real harm done for the Hawkeyes. Iowa fans on their feet once again. The one-two from Obermuller outside, ball two. Tried to snap that fastball there. Just just missed wide. Like that slider again, don't you? Two Back. balls, two strikes, two outs. Back foot him. Obermuller's ready. The pitch outside with the slider. Full count. Just teasing us, huh? <laughs> Looked like that time he tried to, although Moss was set up kind of still center of the plate, so I'm really not 100% sure what the, uh, what the full target was, but. Bring it back in, Cade. Three balls, two strikes. Runner will be going at first. The pitch popped up center field. Carrying Huxdorf is camped underneath. He's got it. That'll do it. Hawks win 12 to 8. Wasn't always pretty, but uh, but but did enough to uh, did enough to get the win today. And um, kind of did enough the last two there, at least the first day, but didn't quite finish it off. So good to good to get the finish. It's a it's a big win uh, from the perspective of uh, you know just what the standings look like at the end. We talked in pregame, you know, probably wasn't win or else type of game, but boy, life gets a little bit easier and uh, the, the road trip will be a little bit better with the win. Iowa 12, Maryland 8. The Hawkeyes get their 20th win of the season and their first win in conference play, avoiding the sweep. That feels big time as we turn the corner now and head on the road a midweek on Wednesday at Bradley and then at Indiana for three with the Hoosiers. Postgame coverage will start up right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. 
kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kids meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and High V stores where right now kids can eat free. Iowa wins Sunday's game with Maryland 12 to 8. Feels like a big one. And, and to, to be able to avoid the sweep and, and take one against these Terps, really good team Maryland's got uh, this season. Well, and, you know, we kind of joked about it Monday as we were, sorry, Friday as we were going through their lineup, all, you know, all Big Ten, all Big Ten, all Big Ten. Uh, so this is a team that, that's going to be around all season long, and, and they're going to hit the ball well. They're going to they're going to create some problems for some teams. And so, uh, you know, obviously not the, the dream weekend from a Hawkeye perspective, but um, you, you got out and you minimized the damage today, which was really important. Uh, a couple of things that stood out to me, we were able to finish the deal, right? We had a lead late and we shut them down. Uh, and then the other thing was uh, some confidence on the pitching mound today for Iowa with Kate Obermuller. Kate, Kate Obermuller ends up getting a save as he goes four innings, gives up two hits, two runs. Neither were earned. Um, walked three, struck out five. Um, was really good. You know, Jacob Henderson gets the, uh, uh, sometimes those uh, those middle relievers or those spot guys, they get hard luck losses and they get uh, they cherry pick wins. And Jacob kind of cherry picks a win there when the bats come alive. But um, yeah, really, really good job from Cade. You know, after that first inning, I was like, oh gosh, you know, what, what's it, what's it going to look like? But really buckled up through through three super clean innings after that. Offensively, kind of felt like uh, business as usual for the Hawkeyes today, huh, John? Well, sort of. You know, uh, business as usual in that they only scored in in three innings. You know, uh, you feel good with the with the nine in the fifth, but um, just one in the first and and two in the eighth, and so um, a lot. Of, a lot of semi-empty empty innings there besides that. Well, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk with associate head coach Marty Sutherland. Let's take an ID break. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. All right, we'll be right back with associate head coach Marty Sutherland on our post-game show right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down, not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. At Oak Knoll, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oaknoll.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Iowa gets their 20th win of the season, knocking off Maryland today, 12 to 8. We're joined now by associate head coach Marty Sutherland. Coach, congratulations on the win. Thanks, John. All yeah, right. Was, uh, sorry, sorry, I left you hanging. No, go uh, for it. <laughs> well, yeah, just a really good bounce back by the guys. I, you know, I don't think any of us are surprised it happened, but you just don't know the way we kind of gave the games away the first two nights. Um, you know, we're facing a really good arm conference pitcher of the week, uh, you know, last week. And, and um, you know, guy's really good. And I thought our guys did a tremendous job approach-wise with him. And really hitting-wise all weekend, I thought we did a really good job. We were just a short a hitter, hitter too. You think back to yesterday, we get robbed a couple times. Um, but today we were able to string them together the one inning. I think we had nine guys in a row reach and score, you know, before and out. Um, and then Michael was safe on the bunt. So it should have been like 10 or 11 straight. But um, just really happy for the bounce back. Just really proud of him. 
a couple of things from from today's game. You, you know, you had a, a late lead, just like we did in the first two games, and to be able to close it out today, Coach. Yeah, and we talked about it yesterday. It's just we're going to need some guys to step up on the backside, and Hindu came in and got out of that got out of that jam. Did a really good job. Um, you know, when they had already kind of tied, just went kind of quick. They just found some holes. It wasn't like they they badger, badgered them that inning, but but you know they found holes, and all of a sudden it's it's you know four or five runs, um, and it's six to one. Hindu you know gets out of it there. Um, you know, then we have the big inning, and then Cade. You know, really he was his own worst enemy the first inning. You know, really good. You know, he just makes two mistakes on the errors, but for him to to be able to settle down and still be in control, I mean that's a big sign for him. That's that's really the missing piece, and and to kind of cut through the rest of that game you know the way he did was pretty pretty uh pretty fun to watch well, what do you think that does Cade's performance for for the entire staff because we could see the confidence that he had especially when he got to the eight and the ninth inning uh, does that trickle down to the rest of the staff yeah I mean you talked about it yesterday and some of some of the you know stuff that was contagious you know the first two games of guys just not being able to figure out ways to to get out of jams or or you know or just things to snowball and Cade just kind of holding holding the ground holding you know steady the way he did was was big for for you know most importantly him it shows that he has the ability to do that which we all know um but then you know for the rest of the staff to just take a deep breath and say you know what listen my stuff is plenty good you know to get out if I just you know throw the thing across the plate and that's what we weren't doing the last two days late it was a bunch of free bases late in the game you know really in the seventh inning you know Cade survived that one with only the two runs and and then from there he was really good so really good sign and that's you know kind of what we need to to get everything stabilized you know on the back side of the you know the back side of the staff good to see one go through before we hit the road right coach yeah absolutely it was a really important win and you know it was a hard fought series you know we we didn't come out on top the first two games but I don't think anybody walked out of that dugout thinking man we were overmatched you know um, and it was just we didn't make plays right we just didn't make enough enough plays or get the big hit and today we we were able to do enough that way to to do it and it was just really happy with the way the game went you know you've lost the first two games you know, and, and you get down six to one, things have not gone well, you know, and we talked about that before the game with the way the wind is like, this is the day that whoever, whoever doesn't give up, you know, whoever doesn't give up outs for the 27 as an offense, right? I mean, that's what the most important thing is, is it's going to take literally nine innings of focus. Somebody may jump out. It could be us. It could be them, but you just got to p- keep playing because on a day like today, anything can happen and just really proud that, you know, that's what they did, you know, offensively um, really grinded out at bats really the whole time and just, just really happy really all weekend with that part of it. Um, you know, just, just, uh, you know, those guys taking, you know, getting up off the mat, you know, after a, a couple of days that weren't weren't very very good well coach congratulations on the win and uh the 20th of the season already good job on that we'll uh, see you on the bus to bradley on wednesday thanks john associate head coach marty sutherland on our post game show this sunday afternoon iowa wins it 12 to 8 we're back with highlights right after this this is hawkeye baseball from learfield at u.s cellular we think phones are great but they're not always great for us because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down, not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular and the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Weiner, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. Iowa salvages the series with a Sunday winner over Maryland, 12 to eight. Iowa now 20 and six, one and two in the Big Ten. Maryland, 17 and 10, two and one in league play. Let's relive some of the highlights from today's 12 to eight winner. 1-0 hit on the ground, a second oh. through into right center. One run is in. Here comes another. Wilmis headed for third, and Anthony drives in two. We'll see how it's scored. Yo, two. 
Line drive into center. It is down for a base hit. That'll bring home another. Will Miss will touch home. Runners on first and second for the Hawkeyes. Here comes Kyle Huxdorf with Iowa down two. First pitch to Huxdorf. Ground ball over the third baseman's head. One run is in. Come on, Derigi. He whips off the helmet. Here comes the throw. It's cut off, and we are tied. Yeah. It's on its way home. Line drive, base hit into right. Huxdorf rounding third. He's going to score. Hawks lead. Raider Tello gives it to him. Seven to six. Runners at first and second for Honar. Swings at the first pitch. Drives it deep to center. Get going, baby. It's at the wall and it's yeah. gone. Home run. One ball, no strikes. The pitch. Ground ball. Seegers has got it. He'll flip it to Honar for one. On to first for two. Double play. Yes. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Obermuller feels it, deals it. Got him. Got him. Called third strike. Down he goes. The Terps go down one, two, three in the seventh. Bring it back in, Cade. Three balls, two strikes. Runner will be going at first. The pitch popped up center field. Carrying Huxdorf is camped underneath. He's got it. That'll do it. Hawks win. 12 to 8. An important, crucial victory for the Hawkeyes today over Maryland. Iowa wins it 12 to 8. We'll go on the road now for a few games in a row. We're at Bradley Wednesday for the midweek game before three with Indiana in Bloomington. So it doesn't get any easier for the Hawkeyes. Look to gain some momentum as we get deeper into conference play. A big win today for the Hawkeyes. Uh, on multiple fronts. Offensively, they were there. The pitchers maybe figured something out heading into next week. All right, it's time to uh, shut down our broadcast for today and turn our attention to the Iowa Hawkeye women's basketball team in the national championship game against LSU taking place right now. So go listen to Rob Brooks on the Hawkeye Radio Network or tune in on TV. That'll do it for our broadcast of Iowa Hawkeye baseball today. Iowa wins it 12 to 8 over Maryland. For my great board op down in Jefferson City, Michael, thank you very much. You enjoy that barbecue today, Michael. My broadcast partner, John Evans, I'm John Leo saying so long from Iowa City. The Hawks win 12 to 8. Every day's a great day to be a Hawkeye. Some just a little bit better than others. So long, everybody. Hawkeye Baseball has been brought to you by Homewood and Home 2 Suites, preferred hotel of the Hawkeye Radio Network, Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association, and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. When corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Oak Knoll, an active life care community. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. And by Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.